of the memory. I, I didn't hear you say that. You, you, re you, uh, you so replied you to it. Remember how I said I was rude before? Apparently, I have the memory of her too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Why I gotta? Of course, I sounded more like Native American when I was doing, and you went to cartoon. Is that all the Native Americans are, you Dale? Cartoons. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Jeez, whatever, we're starting. All right. I, I, I had to remove my headphones for a second, because I have like a, I have a headband on one of them, because I just got out of the shower. Ooh. I'm trying not, to get my, trying not to get my headphones soaked in uh, wetness. This is the perfect game to play right when you get out of the shower. Yeah. <laughs> just take a nice cold shower, then play this game. Yeah, baby. Well, why would that be cold? Uh, you know. Because I just mowed the lawn. Quote unquote mowed the lawn. I don't get that. You never explained that to me. Well, here's the thing. I was going to mow the lawn today, but then I noticed that there was just dead grass all over the lawn. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to mow. I'm going to get rid of all this dead grass. So I just got a rake and a shovel and I just started taking up the dead grass and putting it into a trash can. Okay. And that's all I did. I did that for like an hour and a half. It was actually better than mowing the lawn somehow. Why did all your grass die? Well, it's from where we mow and I just never cleaned it before. Oh, okay. And I was just like, you know, every time I mow, I'm running over this again and again. I should probably, you know, get rid of it. Right, nice. Well, at least you didn't have to go up and down the hill with the mower. Hey, uh, yeah. Also, one of the also one of the wheels in the mower is starting to mess up. So you again? Know. No. Before it was a uh, before it was the uh, throttle on it. Like, it has this automatic front wheel drive that if you pull it, it just goes on its own. But now, if I don't hold that, it doesn't go forward because the wheel is so broken. Anyways. Oh, good luck with that. All right. Let's see here. Let's see What were they doing? They were walking up the hill, and we're right at the mural. Okay. Arriving at the dorms, Rin stops in front of the mural as if lightning struck her. She's been so quiet for almost all the walk back that I had all but forgotten she was here. It's Friday, isn't it? It's Friday, Friday. Yes, Friday, the 8th of June. That's not part of the song. It's, it's not. <laughs> This is bad. Bad? Why? I think I'm going to go in a field position and throw up, possibly in reverse order. <laughs> is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's Friday and nothing is wrong yet. This mural is going to be, need to be finished by Sunday, so everything's alright. Do you have any drugs or a time machine? This is not good. Not good. I don't get the drugs thing, by the way. <laughs> well, drugs are a time machine. Not, she's like, can I have some cocaine so I can finish this faster? See, if she said that, then she then she would be you. She would. <laughs> so she's behind her schedule. I'm calling she's in exas exasperation at Rain's carefree attitude several days ago. I don't know what to think. She has left herself open for I told you so unless she can pull off whatever she needs to pull off by Sunday morning. Rain keeps staring at her mural, looking as mortified as she can. Believe me, I'm going to need to work for a while. I glance at Lily, expecting her to share an incredulous look with me as I roll my eyes, but then I realize she's not one to do that kind of thing. Leave me. Leave me be. <laughs> we do, we do, of course, not want, we do, of course, not wanting to aggra aggravate her any more than she already is. There is a churning bad feeling in my gut. Rin sure has a knack for making people feel worried about her. She seems like a person who should never be left alone. Maybe we should call someone? She sounded like she was going into shock or something. I'm sure she'll be just fine. She's just a... Uh, how to say. Lily cocks her head a little, trying to find a polite way of calling her crazy without calling her crazy. I saw that. Hey, who wouldn't? Unique. <laughs> yeah, it's a very unique person. I guess you could say that. She deals with the notion melodiously, nodding in agreement. Sorry about leaving you stranded as you talk to her. I don't really understand her, so I keep my distance. Jeez. So my guess is right. Lily often offers a slight smile as if she was sorry that her own shortcomings have prevented her from becoming closer to Rin. I'm not one to blame her at all. Lily lets slip a long breath, probably a disguised yawn. I imagine she's as, as exhausted by all this as I am. I'd better leave now and give these to Hanako. Thank you for the company, Hisao. 
She goes back to the dorm and Hanako's like this dead, like starved mess with flies surrounding her. <laughs> oh, man. She smells very sweetly at me. It feels different than normal, despite the fact that she seems to be smiling so often. I can't put my finger on what the difference is. It's just different. Relaxed, I'd say, but that's probably just relief over getting her in. Maybe. Yeah, good night. Say hi to Hanukkah for me. I will. Good night. And now it is Saturday! Really? Yes. Huh. You know, because after Friday is Saturday? I didn't know it was either, okay. I didn't know the heart thing meant the passing of time. I didn't know anything about this game. I didn't get that until, like, a couple things in. I was like, you know, it's a different day now, so maybe this is a different day. <laughs> when it's a different day, it's a different day, yes. I know. Yeah, exactly. See how that makes sense? You see something, that's for sure. Anyways, the students roll into class for the Saturday morning session, each and every one of them sporting the tired eyes of people who have worked through it the night. With only... <coughs> excuse me. With only a day left to prepare, I suppose it's not so surprising. Thankfully, we only have to suffer through classes until the lunch break, and then our time is our own. Muto lurches into class with a tired stagger. I suppose students aren't the only, one, aren't the only ones here that enjoy their late night Fridays, late Friday nights. I can't speak. I Without mean, saying a word, I mean, he's speaking right now. I can't speak good. Without saying a word, he spells some page and question numbers on the board and slumps down at his desk. It's completely atypical behavior for him, but it appears that no one in the class is going to call him out on it. Wordlessly, the students shuffle their textbooks into position and get to work. Not wanting to break the trend, I do the same. Fatigue has made the class antisocial. Now the peep is heard among the ruffling papers. That can partly be attributed to the two empty seats beside me. For some reason, Misha and Shizune aren't present, probably doing council work for the festival. It's very quiet without Misha present. I wonder if she was born as rowdy as she is, or if she's making up for Shizune's lack of voice. Rowdy. Nakai, can I speak to you for a moment? I'm so engrossed in thinking about Misha that I don't even notice Muto approaching my desk. Sure, what's this about? It's probably better if we speak outside the classroom. Oh, don't give me some drugs. <laughs> it's like, you haven't been taking these pills. No. <laughs> these will make you feel real good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget about your heart. This is going to make you awesome. <laughs> Forget about your heart? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Rin gave these to me. <laughs> Jeez. So Rin's like the mastermind behind all of the drug dealings? Uh be fair, that would absolutely be her. Yeah, that's true. Something about this doesn't sound too good, but I stand up and follow him out into the hallway. Muto stands in the hallway, scratching his head as he works out what he's trying to say. Not knowing what is going on, I wait silently. So tell me, how are things? Things? I expected him to be a little vague, but this is pushing the limits. You know, things. You've had a week to settle in now, how, so how are things? Eh, fine, I guess. I see. And how is your condition? The pause before condition seems a little unnecessary. Have I had any problems so far? A blue from of relief passes over Muto's face. Good, that's good. The school nurse is a little concerned that you might have been pushing yourself a bit too hard. He asked me to keep an eye on you when he couldn't. That makes sense. I'd ask that you don't just... I'd ask that you don't blow us off so freely. As much as we try to give you the level of education that you would get in a normal school, you have to realize that you have limits. Our goal is to make sure that you know where those limits are and how to mac and act uh, <laughs> <laughs> mac maximize, and mac and mac. Yeah, maximize your potential with, within them. Jeez, all, man. <laughs> I didn't want to have to die. Yeah, you see what I mean when I said my words aren't good today? Well, I mean, no. I'm talking is I might have to go for a little bit. So, hmm. eh, well, I don't know how long it'd take. If you if you think you can keep this a flowing, I see. Not... Look, can you keep a conversation up with yourself and just this one screen? I'm ready to next. I, I could try to. All right. Well, I'm you'll, off. You'll, there. Still, you'll, have to, you'll still have to be clicking this, by the way. I can't. I'm going. Oh, you're leaving. Okay. So yeah. By the way, uh, you skipped text. I didn't even read. I guess. I mean, I don't plan on doing anything stupid. All right. 
Well, that's a start, I guess. Analyze every, like, just recap everyone and everything that's been going on. That shouldn't be too long. Now, like, what is this, the sixth episode? Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. So let's see here. What has happened so far? Let's see, from the very beginning, dude's in a forest, it's snowing and everything, finds a girl that he likes, has a heart attack, gets put in the hospital for four months, I think it was. And he ends up finding out he has a heart condition, arrhythmia. He's sent to a disabled school, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because a heart condition is not necessarily a disability. But anyways, he's sent to the disabled school. He meets a lot of very unique people, one of which, two of which, I think, yeah, two of which we've met this episode. Lily, who is blind, and Rin, who is very clearly armless. And the other characters so far have been the ones mentioned. She's named Misha. She's name is deaf and mute. Let's see, who else? Ones we haven't seen in this episode so far have been uh, the one mentioned, Hanako. She, again, doesn't make sense. She has burns all over her body. That is not a disability, or at least I would not consider it one. And then there's another girl, Emmy, who we have not heard of or spoken to in a while, who she is missing legs. And the whole point of this whole thing is to, I guess, match with one. Or if you're like me going through my first playthrough, you don't match with any of them, and you end up uh, getting the neutral route. Which, I don't think we'll be going in this. I do not want to get that route again. <laughs> oh, man. I played that off screen, and holy cow, was that crazy. <laughs> I remember sitting there reeling for ten minutes after it happened. For those of you who are somehow interested in this game after watching us play through it, I highly suggest that you do not go the route I did. <laughs> Which, if you're wondering how to do that... Basically, don't be neutral to everything, which is pretty much what I was. Like, I didn't really go for anything, I didn't really agree with a lot of people, and I made stupid decisions, and I ended up getting that ending. <laughs> which, again, something you'll just have to play to find out, because I'm not going for it again. <sighs> See, is that everything, I believe? I do believe that is everything. Oh yes, uh, one more thing. Let's see, I believe there are six paths, at least six that I know of so far in this game. Currently, the one I'm going for is the Armless Girl, which... <sighs> it just makes sense to me. She seems like a pretty cool person. I figured, you know, let's go for it. Let's see here. So, uh, I guess I should get my thoughts on the game while we're sitting here, just talking to nothing. So far, it's actually been a pretty fun game. Like, well, I guess it would technically be a visual novel, but it's been just entertaining to get through. Also, somewhat realistic given the weird circumstances. Because, you know, normal people would act like this. Like, they got the, uh, I guess, human personages right, would be the correct term for it. They got the reactions right, they got... They stick to their personalities, don't really stray from them. And, uh, it's pretty well done, actually, for being, like, a fan... Not a fan-made game. <laughs> it's pretty good for being made by people on the internet who, from what I know, didn't really have much of a budget to work on and release this game for free. Pretty, pretty good quality for something of that nature. <sighs> Man. I can't really think of anything else to say, honestly. <laughs> like, this, this is the second, this is the second game I've played like this. It's, a. Uh, well, yeah, I guess it would be the second game that I've played like this, which is, I guess you would technically call it a dating sim. Although, this is more of a, as, as Chiga keeps referring to, a visual novel. Although, it's the second kind of thing that I've played like this before. The first of which, I don't think we've ever shown on the channel or anything. Which, honestly, <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of sad, because it's actually, it was pretty good. I may talk about it more when Chica gets back, because, uh, we, he, he was the one who introduced me to it, actually. Him and, uh, one of our other friends, Brittany, they introduced me to it, and they said, we should play this in call. So we played it in call, we did, we basically did role-playing, where we each took a person, we, we each took a person in the game and voice acted for them. And it actually was really fun to do. We, I wonder if, hmm. That's actually, that is actually a good idea to maybe go for again on this channel. Because the first time through, we didn't record it. The first time through, it was just a Skype call. Hmm. That's actually a really good idea. I will bring that to Chica when he gets back. I 
I'd say I'm done talking for now. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drink some water. While we're waiting for Chica to get back, I'm going to read an excerpt. I'm going to read an excerpt from a book I got when I was down in Georgia. Ghostly Legends of the Appalachian Trail. Stories of folks along the trail that have left us. Well, almost left us. So what we'll be reading is the Kennebec River Ghost, located at the Kennebec River in Maine. The original story went back in 2000. Peter's dream of hiking the entire Appalachian Trail was quickly becoming a reality. All the planning, aching muscles, and food cravings would be worth it, though. About a 150 miles stretch between Peter and Baxter Peak, Katahdin, in Maine, the northernmost point on the trail. Peter took a swig of water from his bottle and put it back in his pack. The Kennebec River Ferry was about to escort him across the river. Taking a moment to relax, the young hiker managed to reach the ferry system in time for the mid-morning pickup. Eyeing the river before him, the Kennebec River looked still from the surface. Its peacefulness could be quite deceptive, and hikers are warned many times over to not attempt crossing the river without using the free ferry service provided to all hikers. Because of the rapid, powerful current, the Kennebec River is the most dangerous river to ford along the Appalachian Trail. The river's current and depth can rise dram dramatically, given that hydro facilities upstream release water. Since there is no... Uh... It's Peter has no choice but to cross ferry. Uh, <laughs> I was reading a uh, story from a book. It doesn't sound like a story. It's a it's ghostly legends of the Appalachian Trail. Appalachian Appalachians. A yeah, Appalachian. Appalachians. Appalachian. Appala Leave in the comments below where there's Appalachians or Appalachians. It's, it's she's an A, okay. Tell Dale that he's wrong, because <laughs> dadgummit if I don't know what's actually right here. <laughs> uh, All listen, right. Everybody, everybody I'm known calls it Appalachian, and we live there, so I think we might be right. You think, but it's fun fact, you're wrong. All right. Maybe it's called differently from the north to the south. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> back to the game. Whoa. So then. Cool quick. Story. Story? So I'm walking outside. As soon as I open the door, an insect decides it's time to live its life on the edge, and it flies straight up my nose. <laughs> oh, man. It was the worst feeling ever. That thing really wanted to be up there. That is great. Something. That's a pretty good story. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on. Finally, we can get back to the game. <laughs> How long were you gone for, by the way? Probably 20 minutes or so. Also, I might have missed this when you said it. What did you have to leave for? I didn't say it. Um, there's a stupid block party thing going on outside, and uh, I had to help my mom unpack everything that she put out there. Ah. There you go. We're just, just going to hear people like throwing rocks at your window. It's like, hey, come down. No, people don't care at me. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I meant <laughs> they don't know who I am. <laughs> Your mom and your sister are just going to be throwing rocks at the window like, hey, get down here. She's not going to break the window. It was very expensive. She said, it was, I didn't say break the window. I said throw rocks at it. Yeah, you know, you never know how many rocks it's going to take to break the window, Dale. Hey, you know. They'll throw bugs at it. They all have something fly up my nose. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, get down here or we'll keep doing this. Oh, by that I couldn't breathe and I'd be on the floor asphyxiated if I... They'd be like, hey, get down here. And by that, they mean hell, because I'd be dead like, at that point. Yeah. It's like, what are you, choking to death? Get down here. <laughs> it's the weirdest analogy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I smelled like a ton of water, so it looks like I urinated, urinated on myself multiple times. <laughs> like, I just unleashed the floodgates and, like, forever. Perpetual <laughs> being. It's like you peed on your pants and somebody else peed on your pants. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Alright. Alright, on to the story. So then, on to my next question. How are you finding your studies? I understand you were laid up for a while. We're not too far ahead, are we? I don't really think so. I tried to keep up when I was in the hospital, so it hasn't been too hard. Until taps his chin and raises an eyebrow as he absorbs this information. Is that so? I suppose there are still students out there who realize the importance of learning. I wouldn't go that far. I was only trying to keep myself occupied in my little life support prison. Well, yeah, you've got to keep up with these things, right? That's exactly it. One wrong, one wrong, one wrong move in this world and you're left behind, right? Four wrong. One wrong move in this world and you're left behind. One wrong move and you're left behind, right? <laughs> uh, right. Wouldn't want that to happen. 
No, no, you wouldn't. Every week there's a new scientific discovery. Most of them mean nothing to the layperson, but any one of them could be the key to the next big thing. I'll keep that in mind. It's obvious that Muto's serious talk is over, and he's gone back to his standard, slightly scattered-brained approach to life. I think in hindsight that I prefer him this way. He's slightly more predictable in this unpredictability. Well then, I think that's all I really had to say. Let's go back inside, shall we? My leap with that suggestion is insurmountable. Sure, you're the boss, right? Muto pauses for a moment. I don't think any of my students have ever said that to me before. And don't you say it ever again. <laughs> for an instant, I consider replying to this, but something deep within me tells me to shut my mouth and get back into the classroom. A few of the students jump at the sound of the door, rapidly trying to pretend, pretend, pretend <laughs> they are working on the questions on the board. Some don't even bother, their heads slumped on the desk as they nap. Thankfully, it would appear that Muto does not even notice them. He returns to his desk, desk and retrieves a scientific journal from one of the drawers. I guess I got to him there. The class returns to the near silence that Muto and I left, in, left it in before our chat. Mixed feelings of tiredness and anticipation buzz around the room. Everyone here is either waiting for a chance to rest or the chance to get their last minute preparations in their way. The clock on the wall slowly ticks the remaining class time away until finally the bell cries out, ending the tournament. The tournament? The tournament. Oh, let's say. What is this? The Fighting tournament? Game? I would have loved the tournament at that point. Not the not the tournament. They're not being illegal in there. The tournament. They're being oh, a different yeah. kind of illegal. Is yeah. The torment. The tournament. The torrent. You know, like the hurricane going through the classroom. No, I mean like well, the hurricane of uh, of pirating videos. What? Torrenting videos. Oh. Yeah. That went over my head. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like that, 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 that's that's a torrent like, stream. It's like man, rain has got a lot going on at the school. Drugs, pirating movies. Yeah, all right, she, she's a crime lord, and the school is yeah. her main battleground. She only acts like she doesn't know anything. But selling, it, fa selling fake art pieces. Wow. I wouldn't even, put I didn't even her think of that. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> For someone who doesn't have arms, she paints extremely well. That's true, that's true. Um, it is true. Before you all leave, I expected the answers for these problems by Monday. Class size is one, instantly regretting slacking off, but still acutely aware of the more pressing issues at hand. The classroom empties in a blink as everyone rushes to their last-minute festival preparations. I stay behind and try to quickly finish the question so I don't have to bother with it over the rest of the weekend, with the festival and all tomorrow. Okay. Apart from me, Hanako is the only one left, obviously waiting for Lily. It's weird that Lily comes all the way to our classroom to pick her up. I expect that moving around is at least nominally harder for her than it is for Hanako. But it's none of my business, and I naturally don't ask about it. <laughs> I don't naturally ask about it from Hanako. He does that when he's talking to Hanako. He just, like, vomits <laughs> air. Yeah, I don't know why, but something just went into my throat. You saw her face. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> her face went down my throat. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? It's whatever. Despite the relative proximity of our seats, neither tries to strike up a conversation about that or anything else either. So an oppressive silence falls, on, falls upon the classroom. See, that's the grammar thing I was talking about. What? Read that again. Despite the relative proximity of our desks, neither tries to strike. Listen, same thing. Neither no! They aren't. Or are they? I don't know. The way he says it is just weird. It's like he's going from first person to third person. Just immediately. No. Yeah. Like, read that. Despite the relative proximity of our seats, neither tries to strike up a conversation about that or anything else. Okay. You should have said neither of us. You're right. Yeah. Actually, geez, I read that as neither of us, which is why I couldn't figure <laughs> out. Like, my brain corrects things sometimes. Yeah, mine didn't. I was like, okay, that's a problem. Dang, they're like picking apart the yep. Finding I'm picking, flaws. I'm picking, in the, I'm, I'm picking apart the grammar, at least. Finding flaws in and out of the wazoo. Exactly. Time passes in silence. It's probably just 15 minutes or so, but it feels longer. I turn pages of my notebook. Hanko turns pages of the novel she's reading. My pencil lead splinters against the paper just when I was about to finish a paragraph. But she's being the fault in her stars like some type of girl. Darn girls. Listen, that was an alright book. It wasn't horrible. Don't defend it, Dale. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I about, just... like, loving cancer and stuff. Or cancer love. Or Not something. Really. 
It's about love and cancer is involved, and I don't like either of those things. It's about two teenagers who don't act or speak or do anything that normal teenagers would. I wish it was about teenagers who don't act or Although, speak. Although, honestly, I was more interested in the... Uh, I, I know you haven't read it, but there's this thing in there this uh, where one of the main characters loves this author, and I was more interested in that author than I was the other main characters. It's good writing. Either way... Jeez. I, was like, I was like, why couldn't they make a book about this guy? Anyways, the sounds of my irritated sigh and subsequent fumbling around for sharpener feel like they're breaking the mood in the classroom. Classroom shouldn't have moods. It's not a diner. Hanako keeps her eyes firmly away from my direction. Before long, Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. Hanako? Her name is all it takes to make Hanako jump from her desk and run to Lily. They talk quietly for a moment, but it isn't long before Lily leaves down the hall and Hanako idles back into the classroom, taking your seat once again. I watch Hanako out of the corner of my eye out of sheer curiosity at the idea the two would be separated. For a couple of minutes, she does nothing but sit with her chin in her hand, staring at the desk dejectedly. The boredom evidently becomes too much for her, though, her slender frame reaching into her bag and politely on a small book. Come to think of it, that isn't the one I saw her reading at the library. She must be quite a fast reader to get through them at this rate. After, a doubt, after about ten minutes of restlessly shuffling in her seat and trying to read, Hanako closes her book and leaves too. As should I, since the assignment is all but finished and there is nothing else to do in the classroom. Not that I have anything to do anywhere else either. The school is a beehive of activity, but nobody pays me any heed. I saunter past classrooms filled with students frantically doing this and that, buzzing around like little worker bees. Or phantoms. They look more like phantoms to me. Or you know. You know, like, the fog on a TV set? What's that called? Dry ice? <sighs> no, when, like, you turn off a TV, do you turn it to a channel that doesn't work and it just buzzes? Oh! Static. The fog? Right? Jeez! Yeah. Static, I think it is. Yeah, no, it looks more like phantoms. Bustling like... about. Yearning for the incessant, <laughs> the incessant yearning for death. <laughs> Sweet release. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. You wouldn't <laughs> guess the school day is over. <laughs> you really would. It's a bit quieter outside, but not by much. People zip by, left and right, hurrying as quickly as they can, busy and energetic. I feel the opposite. The midday sun seems to be draining all the spirit out of my body, making it feel limp all over. All over? He's flashing. <laughs> Warm, soft air flows inside my shirt, feeling like a cushion. He won't be flashing for long. Oh. I yawn lazily, thinking about what I do. I'll drop off my books at the dorm source and then something I haven't decided yet. Maybe Kenji is in his room. On the way to the dorms, I spot Amy coming my way, running despite running despite not having those weird running prosthetics on. I wave her and she skids to a stop. Yo, he saw. Splatters of white and green paint adorn her nose and chin respectively, but her smile is wide as it seems it always is. She leans closer to me, am amplifying the feeling she's examining me. What you doing? Nothing really. I don't have anything to do for the festival, and everyone else seems to be doing something important. That's perfect. Then you can help out me and Rin. But the festival preparations? Eh, I'm not sure if I would be much help. That's fine. I'm not much help either. Amy grabs my wrist and starts dragging me back inside the school quite forcefully. You can fight her. It's easy. She has no legs. I just just dropkick her. Drop her. Or tripper, one trip, and how's she gonna get back up? It's like a turtle. Oh my lord! <laughs> Even her walking speed is more like jogging, making me stumble over myself simply trying to keep up. The stair slows Amy down a bit. Maybe it's hard to climb with her legs, or maybe she's finally run out of breath. To the third floor to the seniors' hallway, ending up where I left five minutes ago. I could just as well have stayed here waiting for Amy had I known. So are you... is Rin working on that mural still? That's right. She needs all kinds of paints and brushes and stuff, so I went to get them from the art classroom. And you need me to help with that. Well, Rin told me you had already helped her, so I thought you wouldn't mind. I see. Ye. So thanks to Emmy's quick logic, here I am again. Quick stuff in the classroom for other people. <laughs> You know, just sneak that one in there. Yeah, it worked. I mean, it felt like it sounded like something you'd say, scarily enough. <laughs> <laughs> the 
The room is empty apart from ourselves and the lonely specks of dust floating in the air. Amy skips straight away to the back wall, digging out a tiny crumpled piece of paper from her pocket. While she tries to make sense of the scrawled handwriting, I take a closer look at the materials lying around here. Dozens of paint cans and bottles are arranged on the shelves in the most unorganized fashion. Some look... <laughs> Some look like they've been left there for several decades, relics of previous art club generations. Next to the heavy stacks of neatly piled drawing paper are boxes full of different sized brushes and unsorted crayons. The smells of paint, turpentine, and fresh paper float in the stale air, mixing in my nostrils to form that unmistakable scent of art. Emmy studies her notes, comparing them to markings on the various paint cans, and passes them to me as she finds the correct matches. She stretches her neck to look on the topmost shelf, but it's not quite enough. Yeah, what a small neck person. Her eye level stays below the shelf no matter what she does. Emmy gives up and just looks at the shelf longingly like a child at a toy store huffing in the noise. I can't insult these people anymore. I've run out of insults. Boing, boing, boing. At the Ooh, moment, there's nothing to boing there. She's all wally. You know her legs? I'm sure they have springs in them. Yeah, but no one, no one cares about those, though. After a moment of building anger, she starts jumping up and down, apparently trying to speed read the labels during the fraction of a second she can see them and catch what she can. It's no surprise that she fails miserably and almost manages to bring the entire shelf crashing down. Now I see why I mean landing a hand here would be useful. Come on, let me do that. You can't jump high enough and I don't want you to hurt yourself trying. Also, I'm like twice your height. You are not. You are with those legs cut off. She turns around, flowing scorn, flushed cheeks and all. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, I'll look up there, okay? She glares at me one more time, but can't come up with a retort. Whatever everything hmm, turns her back to me. That, wait a minute, go back to that. Yes. With a grudging hmm, turns her back to me. Yes. You're missing a she there. <laughs> no. With a grudging hmm, she turns her back to me. With a grudging hmm, turns her back to me. Yes. It would be better I mean, if they I mean, weren't... I can understand if that was a comment they had and afterwards, but... Yeah, not... yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Dale with the literature literally eyes. Anyways, moving on. That's why I need you to be my proofreader. Yeah. <laughs> you can spot, like, a mistake that no one else can. Exactly. So I begin scrounging around the top shelf for paint, while below, Emmy crouches to scavenge what she can from the cupboards. I shake my head a little after double-checking to ensure she can't see me do so. Emmy having a complex about her height was a surprise. I wouldn't have joked about it otherwise. She seems easy going, but I guess everyone has their weak spots. You wouldn't care about height, unless it's a man's height. From what I've seen, at least. <laughs> Do her. I've seen a woman that care about her height. Who? I mean, why? Hey, you know. I guess that works. That does work. Only after we have almost all the items collected and spread out on a desk like a treasure hunter spoils do I realize that it wasn't necessarily the height jab that got her riled up. She might not like be she might not like to be told that she can't do something, like jump. But Amy herself seems to have forgotten all about it already. Quick to anger, quick to forgive. Is she that type of person? It's the worst kind of person. It's a pretty good type of person. No. To be fair, I'm that kind of person. I don't see you get quick to anger. Or quick I, to forgive. <laughs> You're just not quick. quick. I'm pretty quick to forget. I, I, no, I haven't seen something... I, it's, more quick, it's more quick to anger, quick to forget. Like, I haven't seen you build... Like, I've never seen you get angry, so I've never seen you have to If forget. you see me playing, like, video games, you would understand. Oh, jeez. I'll get angry really quick, and I'll be like, ah, forget it. Well... I mean, you've heard me playing Halo Reach. Yeah, but you're like, oh, like, dang. That, that, that's about as close to anger as I get. Well, that's not really anger. That's mild frustration. <laughs> Hey, you know, same thing to me. All right, well, I guess that's something. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not Emmy. Yeah, I'm definitely not. Good. Again, I'm Rin. <laughs> yeah, but you just said that's the kind of person you are. Quick to anger. Kind of. It's more like quick to mild frustration, quick to forget about it. Yeah, that's nothing at all. Like, th that guy would tell <laughs> Moving on. As, it, as least she doesn't seem to have taken anything to heart. As she chatters away happily while we pick up the rest of the items and then make our way back to Rin. I chivalrously carry the bulk of materials as we make our way toward the do dormitories. Waiting for my chance to pounce. Drop all Wait, the stuff on yeah. her and just run. She can't catch up. Yeah. Those fake legs of hers. You say that, but she can. Not if you take them off while she's on the ground. It shouldn't be too hard. 
It's like stealing some of my shoes, except you're stealing their legs. And that works. It's like taking... Candy it's like candy. I can sell these. <laughs> I'm sure Rin wouldn't mind selling these. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Now we're getting... And she's like, a oh, crime Joe. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Rin is really stressed about getting her painting done. It's her own fault, though. She should have started earlier. Is she going to make it? No idea. It looks good to me, but with Rin, you never know what's going on. I found her this morning lying in front of the dorm in fetal position. She hadn't slept all night. I can't believe that the night nurses hadn't found her. Night nurses. And now she's painting away like crazy. Yeah, I've noticed that she comes up as kind of unhinged, so to speak. Amy giggles of that, as well as, my, as well as at my likely too obvious awkwardness. I don't mind it. She's just a little weird sometimes. On that, I can agree with her. I'm like me, Amy seems to be cool twins. Whatever it is that feels so off about her. You skip text. What? You skip text. Still, they don't feel close like Misha and she's. Tag, I didn't do that one. She did itself. <laughs> but them working as a single entity sometimes, it's hard to say where one ends and the other begins. Even though they're so different, just like Emmy and Rin are. And Rin is most different in them all, different from anyone else I've ever met. Yeah, I guess she's a very unique person. I return to that word again, as if it encompasses Rin's personality by itself, but really it's just a substitute for a lengthy description of her oddities. Emmy giggles as I grasp about for a properly descriptive word. She's just weird. Jeez, what a good friend. Eh, uh, you know. I'm pretty sure that even she can admit that she, the other girl's weird, Rin. Well, I'm pretty sure... I forgot sure. her name for a second. Wow. Jeez. I was like, other girl. I <laughs> think girl. Oh uh, man. Anyways, you know, earlier she just spent half an hour sitting on her box. Not in her box, but on it. And stared at her toes. She gills again in a way that makes me think that she doesn't know what's funny about it. It just is. All that time. The working area is a mess, but the mural itself has taken over even more of the wall since I last saw it. The disfigured human figures have been mostly colored in tones of red, pink, and orange. Weird, imaginary things populating the spaces between. If something's disfigured, how can it be a figure? Hey, you know. It's still a figure, it's just, it doesn't look normal. Uh, sure, why not? Maybe. It looks nice. I can't think of any other word that would describe the work concisely and comprehensively, so I settle on myself on the non-descriptive nice. Nice. <laughs> but honestly, it seems that the area around the wall becomes untidier at the same rate as the mural progresses. The ground is littered with dozens of paint cans, various art supplies, and empty soda bottles. Rin herself is in the center of this chaos, standing there looking very cozy as she's a natural part of the scene. Her paint legs have been rolled up to her, her pant legs have been rolled up to her knees, exposing her thin legs which sport a dying spec drying spectrum of war paint, okay. similar to those on Emmy's face. Her paint legs are dying. Yeah. <laughs> Emmy sprints to run ahead of me and gleefully jumps in front of her. I'm back. That was fast. Did you run in the corridors again? He said help me. Emmy points victoriously at me. Rin turns around following Emmy's finger with her eyes looking in my general direction. She looked, She nods absentmindedly at me. She looks like she hasn't slept since last night. A vacant, glazed stare that's focused slightly off me and movements like in a slow motion movement. Hello, Husao. Thank you for the help. Don't mention it. I just did. Never mind. Looks like you've made progress. Looking good as far as I can tell. But now you get more bad luck. I don't know, but I'm almost at a risk. It's a very nice day. For me, of course. Not for you. Hang on a second. Alrighty. Well, now it's my turn to fill the silence with random nonsense. Uh, uh, let's start with this. It's a book, maybe. We'll find out. Uh, let's not read that, actually. Let's find another thing to read. Oh, hey! Of Mice and Men. Come on, baby. Yeah, man. Look at this. Now this is where it's at. <clears throat> Steinbeck. Ah, Mr. Steinbeck. 
few miles south of Soledad, the Salinas River drops in a close to the hillside bank and runs deep green green. The water is warm too, for it has slipped twinkling over the yellow sands in the sunlight before reaching the narrow pool. On one side of the river, the gold... Ah! Alrighty then. Well, there goes the bison man. And Chica is gone. No. God dang it. I'm not gone. <laughs> Dale! Can you not hear me, Dale? Oh man, I didn't realize he said he was leaving. <laughs> well, I guess I can read this one at least. That is why artists are always unlucky. They have constantly to look at their unfinished paintings. I have a message. I did not even read it. Yeah, Chuggy, I can't hear you at all. Wait a second, <laughs> but the, the, the mic's moving. Oh, oh, I'm stupid. Never mind. Okay, I can hear you now. You sirs! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that my uh, my headphones are turned down. Dead <laughs> summit! <laughs> I was like, did he mute, or... I didn't, I didn't hear the Skype message, that's how I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, I read this one. Dang. So artists can't find romance, their favorite TV shows are cancelled, or they die young because of an unspecified disease. It's a deep and mysterious law of the universe. Well, if the, de if the unspecified disease is drugs, then they're right. Unless they're blind. Or they cut off their ear. How long did he live? How long did Van Gogh live to like 50 or 40, I think? I don't know. It's hard to live without an ear. No, you can live without an ear. Not if you cut it off. Hey, you know, he put. it's not like he just left the ear there just he to hanging off of his ear. He did. I don't think he did. I'm pretty sure he couldn't have done that and then put it in a box and then send it to somebody. You don't know, man. Hey, you know. Here's the question, <laughs> Dale. Do I look like a black Stephen Hawking? It's a good question. Not a little bit. Damn it! You know who Stephen Hawking is? I do. That paraplegic guy? He's, he has cerebral problems. The universe is stupid and smart. Oh, man. I, I, I refuse! <laughs> She considers this for a while, looking like she's going to fall asleep. There is a boy. First, it's Jimi Hendrix. Then, it's young Michael Jackson. And now it's degraded. He's Jimmy Jackson Hawkins. It's degraded into Stephen Hawking. You should have just stayed with Jimi Hendrix, dude. I, I, I have a voice. You guys just started naming things. Well, to be fair, that was mad this it. But <laughs> Like, I called you Jimi Hendrix, he called you the other two. I'm still singing with Jimi Hendrix, because you look like him. I'm okay with looking like Jimi Hendrix. I don't want to look like a young Michael Jackson, or a black Stephen Hawking. Like, to be fair, young Michael Jackson is almost as good as Jimi Hendrix. I know, Michael Jackson is crazy. Dude, Thriller? <laughs> That's a good album? He's a good music writer, but I don't, I don't appreciate his insanity. Yeah, but it was young Michael Jackson. It wasn't old Michael Jackson. Young Michael Jackson is a black guy. Exactly. All right. And what? And the old Michael Jackson is a white guy. Exactly. Continue. At the art club, you see, blind boy. So he doesn't see. I just now got what that was, by the way. Have you? Have you? You read this part before, haven't you? No, I just didn't get what she meant when she just had a pause between doesn't and see. Yeah, like, go back to it. At the art club, you see Blind Boy, so he doesn't. See. You already told me. I glance sideways at Emmy, and she glances back in a way that she that tells she has already heard this one before, too. Now, never says anything to Rin, though she continues her monotone soliloquy like an unfunny stand-up comedian. <laughs> He should become an artist. No bad luck, guaranteed. Don't you think that would be a good idea? That only blind people should become artists? No, not as such. Ellipses. You might have a point. Abandoning this train of thought, she turns <laughs> again to consider her work and starts humming a tune I think I might recognize but can't remember the name of. It's Roundabout by Yes. <laughs> I can see you're humming that. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> so what is it like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my 
voice crack. No. <laughs> not on recording. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> Whatever. It was enough for me to notice and everyone else. You should have just ignored it. I know. I had to point it out. I needed to. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, we've, we've determined what she hummed. Let's continue. <laughs> Round by by yes. Exactly. Uh, Emmy arranges the supplies we brought and moves a few paint cans around trying to bring some organization to the scene. Emmy, I need the Prussian blue paint. Which one's Prussian blue? She's staring helplessly at seven or eight cans, each with a different tone of blue. It's the one with Prussian blue paint in it. Jeez, Rin, you're not helping at all. I look around as well, even though I don't know what Prussian blue looks like either. I wonder what blue has to do with Prussia. Oh, what Prussia even is? The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't place it. It's just Russia with a P. Dum dum. I don't think it was part of Russia, though. But it's Russia with a P. It's like I mean, Russia, nice. Russians split off from Russia. They're like, we need to name this place new name. But they're <laughs> uncreative. Russia. Like, we are the P. It's Prussia. I'm going to look up the history of Prussia after this, by oh, the way. Geez, good baby. Just link the wiki page of Prussia somewhere. Uh, in, the, in the description? Yeah. While none of the blues look like Prussian than the others, the small print on the labels is legible enough to determine that none say anything about the contacts being Prussian. There is no Prussian blue here. Emmy gives a sigh. Yes. Heaves, some would say. I guess I have to go back and get some. I promised to help with our class project, though, so I'll be back a bit later. Can you manage without it for a few hours? Her nods, so Emmy leaves. I say it because I like watching Rin paint, and because I have nothing better to do. I sit in a box and pick up today's book from my bag. It's a story about three guys drinking beer for two weeks straight and doing little else. Sounds like the Japanese thing. That sounds, that sounds like an interesting book, actually. I'm sure you would read it. Rin moves from the spot, though, <laughs> and needed the blue and starts working on another. <laughs> Listen, we don't need trains of thought here. We just need to keep going. Or as I like to say, my train of thought has no tracks. That's a pretty good analogy. Thank you. <laughs> Her foot looks, works the brush steadily against the plastic wall. There's a paint on top of layers of paint. The mural slowly gains more form. I turn the pages at a leisurely pace. In this chapter, they're drinking beer at the protagonist's friend's place. In the previous ones, it was the protagonist's own apartment. It's not a page-turner kind of book. A slice of someone's imaginary life that makes me wonder why it had to be written. Why, indeed. The reason for doing something creative. It's something incomprehensible. Like why Rin does paintings. It's just like she and Emmy are the same, going squarely against their fates as if it's just out of spite. Rin even said something like that. Do something you can't, do something you can't just because you can. Is that what she meant? Is that her reason? It might be Emmy's. She comes off as quite a headstrong person. Rin doesn't give off that kind of an air. Thinking about it, she doesn't give off any kind of air. There may be a different kind every time I talk with her. She doesn't breathe. Yeah. No air comes out of her. Like she inhales, yeah. but all she does is inhale. God. <laughs> That would be an interesting way to breathe. Just constant <laughs> like, inhaling. Yeah, just never exhaling. Never, ever exhaling. Exactly. Why did she say what she said? Why does she or anyone at all paint or draw or sculpt or write? I've never had much of a creative impulse, so I don't think I can really understand. It makes me feel hollow inside. Good job, Hussau. Jump off that roof. I mean, don't jump, fall. Yeah, <laughs> fall. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would be awful if he actually jumped on purpose. Hey, man. That made me feel worse about it. <laughs> like, I made him kill himself. <laughs> uh, what a grim thought. I can't really decide whether it's true or not either. <laughs> what a perfect statement. I know. I thought you were just saying that before I looked up. <laughs> Every time we stop, it's a perfect statement afterwards. <laughs> Am I content being this way? I can't deny I'm feeling a bit envious with Rin, but I can't really consider it a flaw of any kind. I am myself, and she is herself. Still, I do need something that could make me feel a little less lost about myself, instead of just drowning myself in these books as I did in the hospital. I can't help but feel disoriented. The new school lifestyle and people around me contribute heavily to this sensation. I'm trying my best to fit into existing social skir circles. Skirkles? Uh, yes, yeah, skirkles. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Uh, Existing social urkels. Yeah. Say bye, do that. And it's just a, like ten people saying that at once. <laughs> that's that's how they communicate through language. Yeah. 
and most of the people I've met have been really nice. It still make it still feels like I'm an outsider though, like I don't belong. I shake the feeling off, realizing that I'm spacing out. I've neither turned a page of the book nor done anything for Rin. She's trying to pour some paint from a big can using only her feet, having not bothered to ask me. Or maybe she did and I didn't hear it. By the way, it looks very unstable. I quickly jump to help her, as it looks like she's about to spill the entire contents of the can all over the pavement. I take the can from her feet and pour some in the bowl. She doesn't say anything and neither do I. I catch a glimpse of her eyes and looking silently at me from under her unkempt bangs. It's an unreadable expression, a perfect poker face mixed with a hint of something like a mild surprise. I wonder what she's thinking. Maybe she's wondering about what I'm thinking. Maybe nothing. A penny for your thoughts? Do you have any pennies with you? I don't think I do. I don't like I would tell. I'm not thinking anything either, so you're in luck. Except now I just did. She frowns, looking very unsatisfied. It's hard to not think about anything, but it's important. I'm about to ask why it's important when some old guy walks up to us looking like he has some business with Rin. Ooh. Here's the here's the decision. I've that, never seen this guy before. Really? Yeah. I thought you played through the neutral route. I mean, I, there's different neutral routes. I think I don't know. They're, they're all the same. I think it's if you're going for a girl and then you don't get her, you end up dying. Ah. So okay. I guess you're on your route yeah. for Rin, and this then you. This is the decision that I was waiting for. All right. I think this is the one for Rin. I never <laughs> saw this guy. Oh, I can make it. I like his tie. It's if I don't I hate ties with designs on. Them. It's pretty, it looks. It kind of looks like pizza, or it like it's like it's pepperonis and the cheese. Yep, exactly. Rin doesn't take her eyes off the wall and responds so naturally that I can only assume they know each other. I haven't seen them in before, so I naturally wonder who he might be. Maybe a teacher. His hair was faded silver to, his hair is faded to a silver gray, so much that it looks artificially dyed. I hope that's not the case. Small round glasses hang on the bridge of his nose, but it appears he's constantly looking over the lenses rather than through them. Now, when he first said that, I didn't even notice he had glasses on. I, that was the first thing that I like, noticed. They're pink. Pink is disgusting. I thought those were just, like, part of his eyes. Well, that would be an interesting artistic choice. He's studying the mural intently over said glasses. Good, good. What bold composition you have here. He moves to inspect the mural closer, talking to himself about it in a way that makes it obvious he wants us to hear it too. Very good. Very good indeed. I don't really know what to make of it, but Rand doesn't seem to care much. She's looking around her working space the various bowls of different tones scattered all over. Peace out. Hmm? A little more of this. There's a helicopter outside. Nice. Oh, that doesn't seem like they can see it here, so that's cool. <laughs> Give me a second. Jeez, Lou! What? Again? What? Oh, I thought you were leaving. No. <laughs> that was what it said. That was just, <laughs> that's happened so many times. It really, I need to pay more attention. Oh, man. I, will, I pour 50-50 mix of two paints into the bowl to create more of the same pale pink tone Rain was using to fill up the shape of a man's face. And watches me doing so, which makes me feel nervous somehow. Her face is so unassuming that it feels like she's just waiting for me to do something wrong. The man turns to reckon me as well, looking surprised as if, he, as if he noticed my presence only just now. Maybe he did. Why, hello there. Who might you be? Uh, I'm a transfer student, class 3-3. He's Sanakai. Nice to meet you. Who does class A? Well, I won't hold that against you. He laughs very loudly, obnoxiously loudly. A few small birds take flight from a nearby tree. I'm Shinichi Nomiya, the art teacher. So this is the art teacher. In retrospect, should have guessed that much. He even looks like one as far as first impressions go. How did you come to end up assisting my protege? I wish I knew. I am interested in the art club. That's the one I didn't pick. Wow, jeez, Dale, you harsh son of a gun. Here's the thing. Like... I thought that would be a good thing, because it would be like, oh, yeah, I'm interested in her. <laughs> and then I ended up, you know, getting the bad route. <laughs> well, I mean, usually girls wouldn't like it if you're stuck with them, I would assume. No, it doesn't say I'm just kind of stuck with her. It says I just kind of stuck with her. Oh. See, I thought that was a good choice, but apparently it wasn't. <laughs> I like I like how you immediately jump to the top one. You're like, no. <laughs> yep. I guess I'm a little interested in the art club. Funny, but this has to be... 
This has to be the decision, because yep. I can't think of any other place it would be. <laughs> yep. I blurted out, partially inadvertently. Inadvertently. What do you mean? Nothing specific. I wonder if I could come by some... I wonder if I could come by sometime, even if it's just to observe or something. I've been thinking that I should join some club or something, so... It's in no way a pre premeditated move, but a vague sense of determination has really been building inside of me for this past week. I want to do something. I want to belong somewhere. It might as well be the art club. My shortcomings notwithstanding. The teacher seems pleased. Oh, you want to join? Well, we always welcome new people, of course. Club meetings are normal enough. We study various aspects of the fine arts and try our hands at them as well. Or feet. He gives an embarrassed cough, but Rand doesn't seem to mind. I take a small amount of comfort from the fact that I'm not the only one with vocabulary difficulties in this school. Namiya rebounds from his faux pas by theatrically checking the time from his huge gleaming pocket watch and snaps his forehead even more theatrically. I really must take my leave now, but if you have questions, I'm sure Tezuka can clarify. Somehow mentioning clarify and reading in the same sentence doesn't feel right. However, I don't say as much to the teacher since he seems to be in a hurry. Tezuka, I'm pleased that I'm pleased to see that this little project is going so well. I just stopped by to remind you to not to I just stopped by to remind you to not run off by yourself tomorrow. I've invited certain people to the festival for you, and I'm sure they'd like to meet you as well. I hope I'll see you on Monday then, Nakai. The teacher leaves and we are left by ourselves again. Rin is still painting as if nothing notable happened. Since nothing in fact did, I am left wondering on what, what on earth is wrong with me. Art and I haven't worked well together in the past, at least judging from the grades I used to have in middle school. Maybe a club will be different than an obligatory class. Who knows? I try to come up with something meaningful to ask about it, but to no avail. I'll just go to a club meeting and see how it goes. So he invited some people tomorrow just to check out your painting? He has a lot of art people friends. They like to talk about art. I think he wants me to talk about art with them. Somehow I get the feeling that you aren't too thrilled about that. Riggs shrugs non-committally, but it still gives an impression of her general displeasure at the idea of having to discuss her painting or any painting with other people. I don't really like talking about art. It is already a way to talk without talking, so why bother talking about it? I can understand that. It's like being bored and talking about being bored because you are bored. I'm not following you. Have you ever talked about being bored? It's pointless and not very exciting. All you can really say about it is, I'm so bored. I once spent a week trying to think of something meaningful to say about boredness. It was the most boring week I've ever had. That's pretty fitting, don't you think? Rin gives me a look, the laconic kind that does that looks like it doesn't mean anything, but it does. Anyway, I don't know. I guess I just rarely can come up with anything to say about art. I mean, like this one you're doing now. I have no idea what to think about it except that it looks nice. What is this painting about? It's not about anything at all. Ellipses. That's why I'd like to say, so I did. But that was a small lie. I said it anyway because I would like I would kind of like it to be true. Teachers wanted me to do this, but I didn't have any ideas. I tried to have some, but nothing happened. So now this is a painting without any ideas. But what are you painting, then? No idea. Come to think of it, I think I'll call this No Idea. Ah, now I started thinking again. This is bad. <laughs> I was wondering what that was or something. So, uh, so you haven't gotten this dialogue before? <laughs> no, I haven't. Well, then you're on the right route, buddy. Hopefully. She shakes her head vigorously for a while, trying to shake thinking out of her head. That amber-red hair flies wildly around. That is why I had Emmy help me. She makes it easy to not think about anything. You know how she just talk you know how she just talks, talks, talks about nothing for hours. It's like her head is made of bubblegum foam bath jelly. I almost misread that. I don't know what I misread it as though. Nice. You're kind of saying, but not really. It's very helpful if you stay here. I'm not sure that if, if that's a compliment or not. It's probably neither, with Ren being the overly neutral person. So is there anything specific you'd like me to do to make you not think? Just be. It's a great line. <laughs> Just be. Dang it, Adele. Don't start talking like her now. <laughs> hey, you know. Oh, no. 
Don't worry, I could never talk like that. <laughs> My brain doesn't work that not well to do that. <laughs> that not. My brain works is pe- my brain works period. Yeah, that's true. That's the thing. Good. So without knowing what I should do, I just sit on an empty box to watch her continue with the painting, idly leaving the pages of the beer drinking book. Rin has a serene expression on her face, her dark green eyes hiding what she might think behind them. No, wait, she's supposedly not thinking anything, right? She quietly hums to a tune, interrupting every now and then with polite requests for more paint or another kind of brush. Her concentration is admirable, even though she seems to be sleep-deprived and under pressure to finish the job. I find myself... Really? You skipped, like, five. I ain't know. Go See, back. this one and the this concept- one. Yeah, but you skipped it anyways. Go back. I, this is the one you skipped! Go back. You already read this one! Her concentration is admirable, even though she seems to be sleep... Oh, yeah, dude. I'm gonna slap you. Eventually. I knew you skipped one. Eventually... Inch by inch, the painting gains more form, details being added on top of details, colors entwining with each other, filling the empty spaces growing on top of each other. I find myself thinking about inspiration and motivation to create art again. Where does one get ideas? They don't come out of nowhere, and I don't think there are muses that magically inject some inspiration in your head. <laughs> well, unless you consider drugs a muse, and you inject that into your head, so... <laughs> Well, you, inject it into, you inject it into your arm, which goes to your head. No, so. You inject it into your head through your nose. Right, yeah, you know, just take a needle, stick it through your ear, just right into your brain. Oh, that's the quick way to do it. <laughs> Ideas have an origin and a purpose. Mm-hmm. The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that Ren is lying about her mural, or at least twisting the truth. Maybe she doesn't even realize it herself. You can't do anything creative without having an idea of what you're going to create. That would just go against the definition. Every stroke must be decided to be drawn. Even if it's made at random, then what too that then that too is a conscious decision. So for painting, even this one must be based on having some deliberate goal or idea of what to paint. If Rin's idea is to have no idea, as she said, does that count as having an idea? A logical paradox? That seems to be Rin's modus operandi for most normal interactions, so it wouldn't surprise me if she hadn't even noticed this herself. I wonder if I should bring it up, but I'm not sure if I want to engage in an argument about logic with this girl. <laughs> One of us will probably end up short-circuiting fairly quickly, so I discard the thought. Rain is squirming and shuffling restlessly. Even her usually blank visage breaks occasionally into pretty difficult-looking expressions, the kind that one doesn't just come up with by accident. Jeez, old. Hey, you know. Everything alright? Yes. No. My back started hurting again. A good drop kick will fix that. <laughs> this painting is too big after all, and it's hard to paint in this position. Want to take a break? After I finish this part. Of course she doesn't take a break, and I don't want to bring it up again because that would be completely and utterly pointless. Brent continues her work, and I stay with her. I like to watch her paint. I'm going to be a member of the same club she's in now. Yeah, you're in there now, Dale. I'm in! Excellent. Oh, soon you'll be really in. Soon I'll be coming in, Polnareff. That's so. Make sure you say that to any any person ever. Yeah. When she declares the mural to be finished, it's almost it's already so dark that I have no idea how she can tell. Save that in Polnareff for the end. That's when you really need it. Yeah. There is no celebration, no general sense of a job well done. Just a tired and laconic. I'm done, and then we both go to sleep. See, that's more than I got in the other one, because the other one, I didn't even go to the mural afterwards. Oh, nice. All right, is this a good spot to stop? Because I need to take my sister's dog out. So what could happen is you could read some more of that book there, yours, and I'd be like two minutes because I'm not like doing a full-on walk. Uh, sure, that'll work. All right, cool. Should I restart the story I was reading or continue where I left off? I would recommend continuing where you left off as to not bore uh, the cause viewer. I, yeah, because I was only, well, I only read like one paragraph of it. Well, read more. <laughs> Okay, so let's see here. Where was I at? Alright. Since there isn't a bridge, Peter had no choice but the ferry across. All aboard, a voice boomed playfully. Peter smiled at the man who would serve as his guide across a 70-yard wide river. How you doing? I'm John. The eccentric guide wore a, right, wore a red life vest and hat to match. Peter thought he resembled a tomato. He shook John's proffered hand. I'm Peter. John sized up his new passenger, immediately guessing from his unkept beard, sporty walking stick and gear, that his guest was a, thru- a through hiker. <laughs> I can't speak. 
It looks as if you're the only one who needs a ride. Peter looked around him. Thankfully, no one else had arrived. The young man enjoyed being alone. That's what impressed that's what impressed upon him to attempt the trail anyway, the solitude. Although he had met some interesting people on his journey, the interactions were always brief and benign. Well, before we sail across the Kennebec, let me give you some quick instructions. John handed the hiker a life vest and proceeded to quickly fill him in on what would be expected of him as a passenger. Any questions before we cross? No, I don't think so, Peter replied simply. Very well then, follow me. John led Peter to a red canoe resting on the bank. Peter paid... I can't speak again. Peter placed his gear into the canoe and then got on. In. John handed Peter a paddle. Do you mind? Not at all. It's the least I could do for what you're doing to help me. Peter got comfortable in the front of the canoe. John shoved the boat from shore before quickly jumping in. Pretty soon the two rode in a cohesive rhythm. While the river appeared to be somewhat peaceful from shore, Peter noticed the current was much more swift while in the boat. Appearances were deceiving when it came to the river. He asked, John, do you know of anyone who dared to ford the Kennebec? The guide thought for a moment before answering. I've been doing this for a while. Can't think of anyone right off the top of my head. Pretty much the hikers or campers or anybody else who needs to get across are cooperative. I've seen these waters flooded. The river is nothing to fool around with. Changing the subject, John asked, What are your plans for today? My goal is to reach the Moxie Bald lean-to, where I'll bed and for the night. I know it's a good 19 miles there, but since it's still the morning, I might just make it. If not, I'll set up camp somewhere. You look pretty spry. You'll be on top of Katahdin before you know it. <laughs> that word gets me every time. Hope rose in Peter at John's spoken words. It won't be long now, he thought. The two continued in comfortable silence until they reached the other side of the river. We're here. John hopped out and pushed the canoe onto shore. Peter tucked the paddle he had been using into the canoe and got out. Much obliged for the ride. You're welcome. Good luck with the rest of your journey. John shook his hand. Peter turned to go when John added, About half a mile ahead, you'll come to a clearing. On your right, you'll have a nice view of the Kennebec River. Peter shook his head and gave John an affirming nod. Peter was never one to turn down a beautiful landscape. Why hike the trail if he didn't enjoy the views it afforded? I'm going to take a break and drink a bit of water real quick. <laughs> oh, hey, he's back. Is he? Shizzy? Didn't even say he is. <laughs> Yeah, when you said, sh- you said Izzy, I thought Shizzy. I get that Shizzy! Which, I'm not going to lie, I might start calling her that, just so you don't hear me saying she's an A. That's a, fine. I don't care that. She-dog. S-dog. S-dog. Yo, S-dog, what you doing? Bezeps. You still don't know who Bezeps is. I don't. We'll find out there. Right, maybe you won't. Baron maybe. Zeppelin, okay? Okay? Yeah, if I ever watch JoJo, I'll find out. I mean, I just told you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I heard Zeppelin, and that's all I heard. That's all you need to know. All right. The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. It's weird going from that one story I just reading to this. <laughs> Hang on a second. <clears throat> all right. Sleeping late is fine since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday, though, but the festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at the soda booth slinging noodle soba booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low quality food. Yeah, I thought it was like soda booth. I could go for yeah. a soda. <laughs> I could go for a soda. And a booth. Yeah. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider these as ominous as others, so I'm not worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. It's the same dialogue, where I... What? I really uh, so you're worried? Yeah, I am. <laughs> exact same dialogue. Dun, dun. <laughs> Hopefully he says no to the offer, though. Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji's up to out of impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans, since everything is doing, so everyone is doing something. Then again, I can picture him having built a soundproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort, complete with no girls allowed sign. Always one of those. Especially no girls allowed sign. You can just make one of those. Yeah, but it's not a fort at that point. I mean, it could be. I'd have to get two baseboards. And surround my body with them. I was about to say you could get like a piece of wood and then draw it on it. Or I guess paint it on it. Well, a piece of wood is not a fort. No, it'd be the sign. 
It'd be more perfect. It'd be more forty than a placeable place board. Pace board. That's the word. Whatever, man. I just want. A like if you're fort. making a fort, would you want a sign made out of wood or pace board? Wood, but I want a fort too. I don't want just the sign. I know. I mean, if the sign is nice. I wouldn't mind it. Listen, the fort is your decision, <laughs> but the but the sign has to be a certain material to match the fort. All right. Well, I want I want it to be black steel. All right. <laughs> good, good luck drawing something on that. <laughs> and with the girls crossed out and body curly squirrel 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 underneath it. Scrawl. <laughs> that's a Final Fantasy thing, right? Squirrels? Squall. No, Scrawl. I don't know. Or no, that's Squall. I still don't know. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> but anyways. Knocking on his door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens a crack. Who is it? Dun, dun. <laughs> You have the music turned on. I <laughs> know. I'm saying that because you might be getting an ending that you're not. I hope not. I do not want that ending on stream. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. It's not really that early. What is it, man? Nothing. I'm just going to ask what you're doing today. Half the school is out there already. Out where? Why? I just realized I can see his eyes in his glasses. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> what? What, what? Is this today special? Why are they there? Who are? I can hear them. It's loud. They told me, has the invasion begun? He suddenly looks more alarmed. What day is it, man? Yeah, I guess you can't see the big wooden boots outside and people selling stuff. What the hell are you talking about? I have my curtains closed at all times to thwart the snipers. Not gonna lie, I used to do that. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, it's the festival. You know that, right? Oh, shit. That's today. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Damn it. I can't believe I forgot. I don't have any fort finished yet. This is bad. This is going to be a very bad day. It's good you told me this, man. This is going to be a bad day. Why? Oh, man. They're going to be everywhere. The people. Outside my window. Socializing. Could you rub his temples nervously? Suddenly looking very ill. It's going to be loud as hell. Damn, and I was going to go out today, but now it's ruined. Everything is ruined. This is awful. This sucks. This sucks. What the hell? This really sucks. I can't go anywhere now. There's nowhere to run. Kenji seems nervous. You can say he's majorly freaking out. I can't believe this. So that's what today is. Damn, I couldn't even prepare for it. I couldn't even brace myself, and now it's here, and I can't do anything. You should have told me earlier, dude. I mean, at least I know, but I could have known earlier. Imagine what I could have accomplished. All right, I thought you knew. So I guess you're not going to do anything today then? The weather is even good. Yesterday was really windy, so I thought today would be cold. It's not, though, so there's no reason to just stay inside. Yeah, you should check out the festival out. Check out the festival yeah. out. I, I know, I said check out the festival out. That's what I said. No, I said check uh. Oh, check up, please. Okay. Check out the festival out. <laughs> Can you close and cover the space with his hands? Ah, no, no, I can't do it. Don't leave me alive out there. I know it. He does look rather tasty. tasty. That has to be a joke, but he said with such a straight face. Relatively straight. What are you going to do? We should hang out in here. You can help me build my fort. We still might make it if we work together. Well, I joined the art club, so I guess I'll go with them. There you go, you're yes. free! Yes. No death. No death run. Oh. Katawa Shoujo, 100%. You. you did what? I joined the art club. Man, that was a bad move. Really bad. You don't know what kind of girls there are in the art club. Troubled angsty cuties who tear your heart out and eat it raw. It's a lot better than dying. <laughs> I'm not one art club member, and I don't really see Rin suddenly becoming a psychotic murderer. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I do. That. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that seems unlikely. Don't say that. Don't fool yourself. You have no idea what you're dealing with here, man. They are the worst kind. They drag you in with this all fancy pantsy shit, and then you least expect it. Bam! Damn what? Did you slap your hand? I punched it. Yeah, same thing. Can you seem slightly phased at my skepticism, but not let any less leaning? It doesn't matter. Tread carefully, man. Tread carefully. He fingers his scarf. <laughs> he fingers his scarf nervously, Ew. faster, faster, like he's trying to start a fire. Then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. I'm going to have to find some place to hide in, a safe haven. 
I then knock the lights out of myself so I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Later, dude. You escaped death narrowly, but still escaped it. You, you, you. Nicely done. The door slowly closes with a low creak, and I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. Can't say I wasn't worried. Oh, I'm so happy that I don't have to do that again. Anyways, the happy hubbub of the crowd greets me as I push myself to the main door and step aside, outside. The school grounds were transformed into festival grounds over yesterday and this morning. Colorful stands lined... Colorful stands? <laughs> Jojo! <laughs> lined at the main walkways from the main entrance to the school. I was waiting for you to say that, by the way. There you go. <laughs> are still carrying stuff to and fro, but behind most counters are relaxed students who look like they are good to go. This is so much better than the other one, because the other one he was just depressed. <laughs> well, the other students have been up so have been up early to finish the preparations. A feeling of guilt passes through me, but it soon goes away. I'm just a lowly transfer student after all. Visitors are already strolling around the ground. They're they they're 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 they're, 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 they're. <laughs> <laughs> There's some young family with the protrude parents trying to keep up with their over Protrude? Protrude? Perturbed? Yeah. Protrude, you know. I, I wish I didn't. They're protrude parents. They're protruding. Oh, gross. I guess they're, they're trying to experience the end of your tower, show you? Exactly. They're experiencing not death. <laughs> the opposite they don't have of death. They're not yearning for death anymore. The opposite of death. Life. The creation of it. Yeah. There you go. It's like life and death or something. Well, I would you know. A few students are own accompanied by their parents. And a lot of the older young people who are here for no reason I can imagine. The car- the carillon bursts into life and the principal's squeaky voice announces the opening of the festival over the PA system. Everyone applauds politely if a bit unenthusiastically. A school festival. We didn't really have festivals in my old high school. It seemed kind of old-fashioned, especially considering the school I came from, but it's still somewhat exciting. A day off feels sweet after the first week of hard work, despite me lying in the hospital bed for four months prior to this. I recall even wishing that I could go to math lessons during my stint in the hospital. I can't remember the program for the festival, even though Muto went through it during class just the other day. I step off the yeah. I step off the dorm steps and take a tour around the grounds to see all the stuff the others have set up, but I only make it down to the bottom of the stairs. Oh, a few people are studying Rin's mural on the wall, while the other herself is lounging on the sidelines, leaning against the wall and looking extremely bored and mildly under the weather. Good morning. Hello. How's it going? Nowhere. I'm stuck. What do you mean, stuck? I mean, I can't walk stuck. I think my legs are out of order because of yesterday. Carry her. Then, when in a moment of weakness, drop kick her. <laughs> Just break her shoes. Exactly. Now you're starting to get it. Uh, does it hurt? It will when I'm done. <laughs> it's hard to say. Maybe. The strain of working on the mural was greater than she let me know. I thought it was just a bit of tired muscles or something. I meant to ask something further, but Rand swiftly moves on to another topic. Teacher's friends came by. Then they headed into town for lunch and asked me to go. It was a good thing my legs hurt so much. But you're stuck sitting there. That's not good. I'll just wait till I can walk again. It should be either sooner or later if you think about it for a while. Teacher was happy that I finished the mural. He should be. But I wonder if it's finished after all. There's a saying, art's never finished, only stopped working on, or something. Oh? <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I'm pretty sure that is the same. I mean, yeah, I've heard it before. I just that's, that's a very poor paraphrase of. Yeah, I thought yesterday that I had done everything, but now I'm not sure anymore. I should paint more details. Maybe, probably. It's very hard to decide. Finished or not, the mural looks great in broad daylight. Various human body parts repeated over and over in a, in a wildly mutating, mostly disfigured variety of elements. Okay. Let's see here, you got a foot, a face, a body, some nipples, and a hand. <laughs> Neon Genesis Evangelion, that works. Yes. They are rough looking, as if thoughtlessly placed and rudimentarily painted, but a great deal of thought and care has gone into each and every one of them. 
Does this one have a frog growing out of his head? Hold on a second. Hey! <clears throat> Where was I? On one side of the river, the uh, golden foothold sloops, sloops curve up to the strong and rocky Gabalin Mountains. But on, what, uh, but on the valley side of the water is lined with trees. Willows fresh and green with every spring, carrying in their lower leaf junctures of the debris of the winter's flooding, and sycamores with molted white recumbent limbs and branches that are that arch over the pool. And when on the sandy bank under the trees, the leaves lie deep and deep and so crisp that the lizard that a lizard makes a great skittering if he runs among them. Rabbits come out of the brush to sit on the sand in the evening. And the damp flats are covered with the night tracks of coons, and with the spread of paths of, dog, of dogs from the ranches, and with those split wedge tracks of deer that come to drink the dark in the dark. There's a path through the willows, and among the sycamores, a path beaten hard by boys coming down from the bran- ranches to swim in the deep pool, and beaten hard by tramps who come barely down from the highway in the evening to, to jungle up near the water. In front of the horse on the limb, of a, uh, on a limb of a giant sycamore, there is an ash pile made by many fires. The limb is worn smooth by men who have sat on it. Evening of a hot day started, started. Evening of a hot day started the little wind to moving among the leaves. The shade climbed up the hills toward the top. On the sandbanks, the rabbit sat as quietly as little gray sculptured of stones. And then, from the direction of the state highway, came the sound of footsteps on crisp sycamore leaves. The rabbits hurried, hurried noiselessly for cover. A stilted heron labored up into the air and pounded down the river. For a moment the place was lifeless, and then two men emerged from the path and came into the opening by the green pool. They had walked in a single file down the path, and even in the open one stayed behind the other. Both were dressed in denim trousers and denim coats with brass buttons, both wore black shapeless hats, and both carried tight blanket rolls slung over their shoulders. The first man was small and quick, darker face, darker face with restless eyes and sharp, strong features. Every part of him was defined, small, strong hands, slender arms, a thin and bony nose. Behind him walked his officer, a huge man with a huge man, a shapeless face, with large, pale eyes, with wide, sloping shoulders. And he walked heavily, dragging his feet a little. Oh, there you go. Hang on a second, let me turn up the volume. <laughs> All right. I'm back. Welcome back. Yeah, I turned up the volume and I was waiting for you to say something. There you go. It's a goldfish. It really is. Oh, hey, women. You'll be seeing a lot more of this. Believe you me. What's that? Of course, I think you know. It's nothing. Anyway. <laughs> the wall was so wide I had to turn my neck from side to side to see the entire painting. It's hard to consider it as a single piece. The elements don't seem to fit together, but I guess to create some kind of a whole. Abstract as it is, I have no idea what's supposed to be portraying, but it's nice. That's enough for me. So I'm myself next to Rin, leaning against the wall like she does. He notices the festival at becoming louder as more and more folks enter the ground. The domes are far from the main attractions in the main building, and the stands around the courtyard, so most of the have not found their way here yet. Someone bored expression sells on Rin's face, making her look... Hang on a second. <laughs> <clears throat> and back we go. Dang it, where am I? Page two. Noisily for cover. And now I'm still determined. I'm the first man is blah, blah, blah. Well, feet a little. The way a bear drags his paws. His items did not swing at his sides, but hung loosely. The first man stopped short in the clearing, and the follower nearly ran over him. He took off his hat and wiped the sweat band with his forefinger and snapped the moisture off. His huge companion dropped his blankets and flung himself down and drank from the surface of the green pool. Drank with long gulp snorting into the water like a horse. The small man stepped nervously beside him. Lenny! He said sharply. Lenny! For goodness sakes, don't drink so much. He continued to snort into the pool. The small man leaned over and shook him by his shoulder. Lenny! The one was sick like it was last night. And then he dipped his whole head under, <laughs> head and all, and said, oh, dadgummit, Dale. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, what, was, what were you talking about? I wasn't talking about anything. Oh, I heard you speaking. <laughs> I was reading of Mice and Men. Ah. It's a good book. book. <laughs> it's a really good book. It really is, that ending. Yeah. The foreshadowing of the ending. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing, there's a lot of foreshadowing in Steinbeck's books. Uh, I dig it. Have you ever read uh, The Pearl? No. This is the first Steinbeck book I've read. You should, you should read more. Like, let's see here. The one I haven't read yet is The Grapes of Wrath, which is apparently his best one. <laughs> like, I've read, uh, I've read Of Mice and Men and I've read The Pearl. They're both really good. Hmm. Back to the uh, game. <laughs> <laughs> a somewhat bored expression sells on Rin's face, making her look detached from everything that's going on around her. She's being awfully quiet. I wonder if she's in pain. She'll help me when you're done with her. So, actually, now, now's the time. She can't fight back. <laughs> be like, hey, uh, could you move your leg like over here? <laughs> so what did the art people say about your mural? The slow turn. <laughs> My question wakes her from a daydream. She lazily turns her face towards me. I'm not sure. I think they liked it. Maybe they did. What about you? Are you happy with the mural? Because I kind of participated. It'd be terrible if you were unhappy. Ren, Ren tilts her head, biting her lower lip. I think it came out decently. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It just is. I guess I'm alright at being empty-minded. Can I ask something else? What did the painting really portray? I thought about it yesterday when you said that it didn't portray anything. That's a logical fallacy, isn't it? You can't make something out of nothing. Not even art. Then frowns and turns her head back towards the clouds. I don't know. I'm not really good at explaining things. It's just a mural. There's nothing special to it. I said it already. She sounds annoyed at my inquiries. I didn't know what it paints, so I decided to paint just a mural. It's a mural that portrays a mural. No, wait. I just thought of a better way to say it. It portrays itself. So, its muralness is at the maximum. At least as far as I can do. So if you think it has some meaning, I think that's the same as this one has. That makes no sense. <laughs> meaning. I feel the corners of my mouth turning upwards into a smile that's just a tiny bit bothered. Now you're the serial killer. It's the whole thing. <laughs> I have never understood art in the deepest meaning of the word. I get the basics, how art is supposed to be only a means for exchanging ideas and thoughts. However, I never learned how I should interpret a piece of art to somehow, to somehow divine what the artist intends to say through it. I know it's not any special skill, but somehow my brain never can connect art with anything else than what I see. All I see is a mural. I can admire the technical skill. After even after all, even I know the difference between that art and book or art. The art There's a festival. Don't you want to go have some fun? I'm fine like this. You don't like socializing much, do you? I think I'm arguing more for her than for myself at this point. It's not that I'm particularly thrilled about the festival either. I'm just a bit curious to see what it's like, and that's about it. Her answer is unsurprising. No, I don't. I guess you neither in the end. You should go if you want to. I know, but I can keep you company. I'm not used... I'm not used to all this just yet, so it's okay to take it easy. I can leave, though, if you want to be alone. I'd like it if you were here. We circle around each other with words, but eventually end up somewhere. They're saying that it makes me feel oddly happy, so I stay. I don't like that this is going. I'm just dreading the ending and having to censor things. Like, I don't have a way to do it. Sometimes I have to put words in to cover parts. Uh, it's going to be great. But <laughs> to even think about that, I might not be able to do that either. I'll have to, like, ugh, the editing. Just put, a, just put a different picture over it or something. Yeah, I'll pay you to put a picture of you drop kicking someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the presence is something I like, too. The odd, warm aura of serenity that seems to an emanate makes it comfortable to be silent. I really like that. We watch people walk by to a chattering happily among themselves. Students are leading their families to the dorms to show their rooms. They pass us in the mural. Maybe glance at it once or twice. I pay less attention to them and more to my companion, trying to figure out my way past a cryptic, unreadable wall of a face. 
Rin's eyes flicker restlessly from one person to another as they walk by. Is she waiting for people to stop the mural? Maybe secretly hoping someone would comment on it? I don't think anyone would assume she was the artist. We're just sitting here like a pair of hobos after all, and she doesn't even have hands. <laughs> I wonder if it's even Rin, even in Rin's style to fish for compliments. She seems so aloof. More people walk by, some of them pointing their fingers at the mural, exchanging words that I can't make out. Someone drops a snow cone on the sheet. Too bad for him. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Everyone seems to like it. I suggest it tentatively, throwing a topic in the stale summer air separating us. Rin doesn't answer right away, but by now I am mostly used to her occasional slowness when she must talk. It's like she takes great care packing, picking her words, which is really unbelievable when you consider the jumble that comes out of her mouth. I wanted to make it so that you can just look at it without thinking. Then I realized that it doesn't make any sense, so it became something like a mix of this and that. From far away, it looks like someone vomited a herd of butterflies on the wall, which is exactly what that obnoxious president person didn't want. Is that word that? What word? That. What is the word for more than one butterfly? Butterflies? No, like a herd, or a school, or a heap. Oh, I don't know. A flock, maybe? Maybe people like butterfly vomit. Rin looks in the mirror, looking surprisingly unhappy. The middle could be better. Usually I like in-betweens, but this is a pain in my butt. Not literally, of course. Then again, I did get that too. I guess it was literally after all. Don't be so critical of yourself. She looks at me finally, but shuts up. At about this point, I start thinking if I should really leave and do something more constructive with my Sunday. This is the pinnacle of social failure. A whole free day at festival right outside my doorstep, and what do I do? Sit here with Rin, two bystanders with nothing to do except to think what a pity it is just to be just a bystander. Ever realizing how pitiful it is, I don't do anything. I don't stand up and take off for a day of fun. Shuffle, shuffle. Oh, I didn't see that. That's really where that happened. It's really where I was all the way up there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Ellipses. Fidget. Uh oh. Shuffle. This is the sounds of Whoopsie. ecstasy. <laughs> this is, these are the sounds of Rin, apparently. Well. Okay. Oh, I thought I heard a heartbeat for a second. No, that was something. It's like, oh crap, it's having a heart attack for no reason. <laughs> someone closing doors downstairs. Oh, okay. Rin is shuffling about restlessly, constantly, constantly swinging one leg over the other knee and then back again. How did you hear the heartbeat, Dale? I don't know how, but I thought I did. <laughs> She has a very He's dying anyway, no! <laughs> she has a very irritated look on her face. Is something wrong? Yes. No. Yes. She suddenly hops up on her feet. It's surprising. I thought she was still rendered immobile, but apparently that's not the case. I have to go find Amy or someone. I need some help with something. I can help you. No, it's okay. One of us is stay here in case something happens. Don't be ridiculous. Nothing even remotely interesting has happened since I came here except that one guy who dropped a snow cone on his foot. Let me help you since I'm bored. So what is it? Rin's lips flatten tightly against each other into an almost perfect horizontal line. She closes her eyes and draws in a deep breath. When she opens her eyelids, the frightening, stern look in her dark eyes takes me aback. You say, oh, you might not want to hear this or maybe you do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. And even if you did, you are not leaving me any choice. I had my period. I can't remember. I was told me about this part actually. However, I don't feel that our relationship is yet on the level where I can allow you to pull my underwear down in the girls' toilet even if you offer to. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that one caught me by surprise. Yeah. <laughs> That's I why you should that. stay here while I go and look for Emmy. <laughs> and blood rushes to my cheeks like the rising tide. My brain tries to desperately search for an answer, but the only thing I can think of is how that was the most coherent thing I have heard coming out of Ren's mouth during these four days I've known her. Yes. That is our you response. Not wanting to meet Rin's eyes, I turn my face aside, pretending I'm looking at someone's parents. Well, more like ye. Yeah. If he said ye, yeah, it would be you. Yeah. I see Rin turning my heel and walking off without further ado. I feel like going to hide under some rock. I wonder how long Rin will be gone, if she will return at all. She does return eventually, appearing seemingly out of nowhere and sitting back to where she was, next to my place. I'm back. She says it flatly, like the blunder never happened. I prefer to forget the whole thing as well, that's why I keep quiet. Oh, she's, she's got a stand! 
<laughs> she grew a stand! <laughs> okay, so I learned one thing today about women. Apparently, under periods, they grow stands. <laughs> that makes them slightly cooler and slightly less disgusting. It's pretty good. Time passes in a standstill. The sun gleams from high above. Stand body. still. Yeah. Jojo. <laughs> it hits me directly in the eyes, but I just squint instead of moving. In a, in a bit, it becomes painful to keep my eyes open just a little, and my temples start aching. My head hurts. I think this day gave me a headache. Can you believe it? Are you hungry? How does that relate to headache? It's not. I ask because I am. I'm making a philosopher over here. <laughs> I skipped your ellipses, ellip I'm sorry. Uh, ellipses. Her oblivious seriousness melts my irritation with its ridiculousness, and I find the corners of my mouth turning slightly upwards again. You know what? So am I. I'll go get some food for us. What do you want? My treat. Doesn't matter. Poison. Give her rat poison. Returning with the food, I give one portion to Ren, taking the other for one myself. One poison <laughs> to Ren. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we dig in without a word. And looks upwards, forward hanging out the corner of her mouth. What clouds? I always thought they were thoughts of the sky or something like that, because you can't touch them. You thought like that when you were a kid? No, I weak. Maybe because sometimes my thoughts feel like clouds, fluffy and white and slow. See, to me, clouds are giant beasts that are ripe for fighting. Every time I look up, you gotta love to see you fight a cloud. I, I, to be honest, I really think like I really want to fight a like, cloud. You just go skydiving and you just start punching the clouds. Like, you know, I, 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 this needs to happen now. <laughs> like I was thinking, how am I gonna fight a cloud? I need to do it, and that's the way to do yeah, it. Just skydiving. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Oh, it's great. <laughs> like the sky was in my mind. Like my mind was the sky. The sky of your mind. Close your eyes and think of sky. You won't be able to think of anything else until you stop. I try it. I try it. It works. Magic. Opening my eyes, I see Rin studying me with her eyes. It feels uncomfortable because she doesn't say anything. I turn away. Eyes are water. Evaporated water. You know that they say almost all the water in the world will at some point of its existence be a part of a cloud. Every drop of tears and blood and sweat that comes out of you, it'll be a cloud. Well, I mean, you know what we consider blood water? Well, it's part water. I mean, I'll part his face with my fist. All the water inside your body, too. It goes up there sometime after you die. It might take a while, though. Your explanation is better than any of mine. Because it's true. Holy sirs, what's up, people? Did you get texted again? Yeah. And Ooh. it's like, hey, check out this Reddit, too. No, it's about cake. Ah. Uh, I could always use cake. You no, know, all I've eaten today was cake, macaroni and cheese, and more cake. Wow. That's a really good diet. <laughs> and I haven't gained a single pound. <laughs> all, all brought to you by Kraft. Because <laughs> uh, all of it was homemade, okay? Hey, all so brought to you by Chig's mom. Chig's. I made the macaroni and cheese, excuse me. All brought to you by Chig's mom and Chigga. There you go. It's brought to me in my stomach. And then Chig's mom again, because she also made the cake. Yeah, but I ate it twice. It's the same cake that I just ate twice. Twice is nice. Exactly. Breakfast and dinner. No, breakfast and dessert. Bre breakfast and dinner and dessert at the same time. I guess the macaroni and cheese was lunch. Or is that five? It's here. If you have three meals, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no matter what time they are. <laughs> okay. Because clearly that makes sense. That's fine by me. That's a great, that's a great, like, I day. Think about it. I, like, I've known people to eat breakfast at, like, 12, and lunch at, like, 2, and then dinner at, like, 4. That works for me. Like, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even though they're only four hours apart from all the, even though they only take the span of, like, four hours. Well, that's confusing, but I'll accept it. Because it's true. <laughs> Excuse me. That's the way you want to feel. Sure. That was the text on the screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's great doing that, by the way. <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I carry on eating the food before it gets cold. The wall offers a bit of blessed shade as the sun revolves around the dome of the sky. The afternoon is always slowly making way for the evening, so I want to become more of a dinner, or whatever the word for an irregular meal is. Despite what I decide to call it, it certainly hits the spot. I've been eating a bit since forever. Ellipses. 
My appetite filled, I let out a satisfied sigh. Rin hasn't eaten all of hers, but seems to be done with her food as well. I lean back to the atmosphere. The crowd is thinned already, but the activity is still going. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. And why not? It's warm, the kind of perfect summer day when it's hot, but not too hot for comfort. The sun... Bleh, my throat. Time I'm, I'm going to take a drink of water while you're uh, doing things. Alright, so while you're taking a drink of water, I'm going to go get cake. Go right ahead. Yahoo! You going down? Uh, you going downstairs to get it? Yeah, it doesn't fly to me, sadly. All I right. haven't invented the cake yet. The cake I flying. Will, <laughs> I will try to read some of that book, by the way. Go for it. All right, where did I stop at? Let's see. I'm trying to find where I stopped at. The hiker continued on the footpath, while John crossed the Kennebec River back to ferry headquarters to wait for further passengers. Peter found this part of the trail relatively manageable. Having confronted more challenging areas, he enjoyed a less grueling part of the main trail. He might reach Moxie Bald after all, if he kept up a decent pace. Finally arriving at the clearing John had told him about, Peter surveyed the scenery around him. The September foliage on the trees boasted peak colors. Rich reds, vibrant oranges, and cheerful yellows painted the land and beneath the Kennebec River on its never-ending journey downstream. Sunlight, sunshine bounced off the river. Peter took out a pair of binoculars and held them up to his eyes, following the river south from where the ferry pickup point was located. He breathed in dim, deeply. Suddenly, he spied movement over toward the water. Peter removed the binoculars from his eyes, blinking hard. No, it couldn't be. Are my, eyes play tricks, are my eyes playing tricks on me? He thought of them alarmingly. Daring to glance through the binoculars again, the higher's vision hadn't deceived him. From his perch, he saw a man wading into the unpredictable Kennebec River. Tall and skinny, the old man wore waist overalls and suspenders over a drab woolen shirt. Peter thought he looked like a gold prospector from the late 19th century. The water recently reached his knees when Peter yelled out, Stop! Don't cross the river! Peter's words sailed through the air. The figure either ignored Peter or didn't hear him, for he waded in deeper. Not giving up, Peter cupped his hands to his mouth and shouted as loud as he could, Wait! It's too dangerous! The hiker quickly picked up the binoculars to his eyes to see if the stranger heeded his warning. The mysterious man glanced up in Peter's direction. Chills ran up Peter's spine, for it seemed as if he looked right at Peter, their eyes meeting through the lenses of the binoculars. The man silently... The man, see it. The man silently <laughs> started at Peter, and then he hit his spine, into the river in a steady, slow manner. I come back to the Yep. Oh, my curse! Oh, jeez, dang thanks, Dale! Apparently so, because I didn't make a mistake until you came back. Okay. I'm just kidding. Man. Oh. You're pretty. I, I'm pretty? You're pretty good. Oh, well. You're pretty good. I'm pretty gay. <laughs> I mean, that too. But <laughs> well, sheesh. <laughs> uh, you already thought I was not gay, just too You just... I, I didn't read that one. I thought you did. Before I left. The sun will set soon. Time really has flown by. Yeah, I heard my head. <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> We've been sitting here for six hours. Yes, we have. You want to do something else now? No, not really. Me neither. She adjusts her position and leans against the wall, and I follow her lead, relaxing my own body. From minutes on end, we sit there without saying a word. I'm trying to feel Rin's mood from her demeanor. The tension of her muscles, the tiny expressions fleeting on her face. It's no use. She's unreadable as always. The crowd swells to and fro, people happily chattering with each other. Very few people pay attention to the mural and even as to us. I fiddle with a few odd pebbles absentmindedly. Throw them at the people. <laughs> the act of doing something just for the sake of doing something. The pinnacle of idleness. Inch by inch, the sun creeps lower and lower towards the tree line, changing the color of the sky close to the horizon from golden yellow to orange and red as the moment of sunset dawn, dawns in the air. Yeah, I know this draws, but I don't yeah, care. Yeah, there you go. I feel like my stomach is filled with lead after eating so heavily, but the brick walls feel surprisingly comfortable against my back. I try to fight, fight against the drowsy feeling that's overwhelming me to no avail. What a wimp falls asleep. What a wimp. Oh, closes his eyes. Opening them, I wake up with a start. A low boom reverberates through the school grounds. After images of bright sparks flash through my vision like stars. Something rises toward the skies from the direction of the sports field. War! <laughs> a, a tail of fire trails behind it until a burst of red and yellow flame lights in the sky high above the school with another loud boom. America's dropping some more bombs. <laughs> 
fireworks. You know, fun bombs. Fun bombs? Yeah, that's what fireworks are. Well, until you realize they're all sprinkled with radiation. America's mm. one true plan. <laughs> but they get them from China. Wouldn't that be China's true plan? Ooh, now you're thinking. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. It's Kenji, a can we Yeah, I was going to say Kenji conspiracy. Yeah, <laughs> the women of China are conspiracy. C- conspiring? Conspiring, that's so... Conspiracy? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> the sudden light of the sudden flash of light against the canvas of the night sky awakened me to realize that it's actually dark already. The sudden light of flash, the superhero. Yeah. <laughs> How long did I sleep? I feel groggy and can't feel my right arm. As I attempt to flex it, I realize why. Brain is leaning heavily against my shoulder, almost falling on my lap. She's fast asleep, not even phased by the fireworks. Her mouth is slightly open and her eyes are peacefully closed. A sleeping childlike face the innocent. I shake her gently with my free arm, trying to wake her up, or failing that, move her so that my other arm is deliberately from its pinch. Liberated. Rin's face twitches and her eyelids shut tighter, as if to resist against waking up. She gradually opens her eyes, but keeps them half-closed, letting the light from the fireworks sneak just past her eyelashes so that her green arses mirror the bright flashes of the explosions, then looks up at me and frowns. Just a while longer, okay? Long white watch. Air horn. <laughs> Air horn. <laughs> Drop <a> kick. <laughs> <laughs> While sitting down. Because <laughs> that makes sense. Hey, anything is possible. Yep. Rin's voice is drowsy and slow, leaving her almost unintelligible muttering, mutter the words hanging lazily in the air. I couldn't speak there. <laughs> it seems as if she is not entirely aware of the situation. Rin's head drops back on my shoulder as she leans against me with all her weight. She snuggles against my side, trying to make herself comfortable, but making me feel very uncomfortable at the same time. I, begin, I become intensely, almost painfully aware of Rin's warm body and the deep, peaceful movement of chest to my arm. Oh, 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 I didn't have to be aware of that. Born and die in the blink of an eye, coloring the dark sky into a constantly changing abstract painting. Yeah. It's, all, it's almost a perfect crime, but it's also free verse. I listen to the low booms of the explosion and Rin's quiet breathing, trying to clear my own head of the post-awakening disorientation. Thankfully, just a while long, the real seems to be just so as Rin. There's no stuff again. over. She finally opens her eyes completely and blinks a few times. You fell asleep on top of me. Twice. You didn't like it? Ooh. Er, uh, well... Why is there a comma right after the ellipses? I you know. Despite the inconclusive stammering, Rin stiffs upright, drawing herself away from me. Well, you are heavy. Jeez. It's a lie. She weighs next to nothing, but I have to get a job to her. It's under the... Thank you. 
This is reality. I didn't say next to me, the loud bangs of the fireworks, the vests on the sky. These things are definitely real, even though they won't stay here forever. I feel like this side no one is being in this or just feel like starts moving towards the main gate like a cattle herd. Whispers of gray smoke drift toward the dorms from the sports field. The pungent sulfur smell of gunpowder it carries along feels like it sticks to my hair and clothes. What the, Was that it? I think so. I stand up and stretch my soul back. Sleeping against a brick wall wasn't such a good idea after all. He stands up as well and turns to face me with an expectant gaze of her tired features. Although she seems to have trouble focusing her eyes, she is looking straight at me. Sometime, something I feel has not occurred too often in the past week. Um, so... I suddenly realize we have been almost on a date here. It's by accident, even if we did nothing. But it wasn't. So a wide blood rushing in my cheeks and my speech stammering. I'm pretty sure Glenn is rushing with something else. <laughs> I mean, it might be, but it just doesn't bring it up. <laughs> I don't know what I should say, especially since it seems Rin's waiting for me to say something. But luckily, she solves my problem for me. Good night, Miss Al. She gives me one more lingering look, measures me, measuring me from tip to toe, turns around on her heel, and skids off, skips off, disappearing into the crowd. Ellipses. Okay, good night. I was standing there, giving my response to the cooling night air. Sigh. The festival turned out to be nothing like I expected. I ended up spending all day in one spot with Rand, even though neither of us agreed on nor suggested that we should do anything. I just didn't have anything better to do, and evidently, neither did she. Things work lingers for a while in my body before disappearing into the falling night. Thinking of my nose, and my throat. Oh hey, look, hey, anime! Look at the anime. So anime? It is. It's not anime now. It needs more anime. It's pretty anime Psychotic right Psychotic nightmare. Hey, you know, close enough. Drugs taking over. It's like, I wonder what she was painting on the mirror. <laughs> she wasn't, but okay. Kill it. <laughs> he did. No, he, he, he birthed it. Now they're all around giving birth to each other. This is a really interesting uh, dream. It's not a dream. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a dream because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Dale. Act two. Disconnect. You don't understand anime. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Watch JoJo. It all makes sense. Here's the thing. I'm just really happy I survived. Survived JoJo. No, I survived this. <laughs> survived Sunday. That again without getting drunk and falling off a roof. Yay, we are all. We, every Sunday, I'm thankful for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you get drunk every Sunday, you just go up on a roof, it's like, see if I fall. <laughs> I wish. Oh, man. It's already half past eight, but this morning's class has not yet begun. We were supposed to have physics, but the teacher is nowhere to be seen. Had I known this beforehand, I would have slept in, too. Suddenly, the classroom door slams open, and Muto grunts his morning greeting to us from the doorway. Good morning, everyone. Muto looks like he has not slept at all. The stubble is messier than normal hair, and the stained dress shirt creates a less than favorable, favorable impression. I guess he had fun last night at the festival, too. Excuse my being late, I ran into unexpected problems. I'm usually not one for festivals like this, but I hope you all had a good time. After all, these sort of events are important to you, after, are important to you all, since they give you a short reprieve from schoolwork. Class replies with various degrees of enthusiasm, and Muto proceeds to roll and get started. Take roll and get started. Yeah. 
He's, he's a little ball like a goron and just yeah. rolls around the grass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that school in Japan? Just they yeah. roll? The goron school. <laughs> <laughs> the goron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like this one rolls to this left, this one rolls to the right, this one rolls backwards. <laughs> That that's his ability. Yeah. Backwards rolling. One of them is on his side and he rolls so he doesn't go anywhere. Uh right then. Today's subject is photon particle physics. Man, that class went by quick. Exactly. For long, I have descended into a comfortable coma-like state along with the rest of the class, letting Muto's rambling speeches pass through one ear and exit the other without leaving a trace. Now, who would tell us the solution to this problem? He's written a rather easy equation on the blackboard. It's really he tries to get the class to participate. Nobody? Come on, guys. Makai, how about you? Unfairly signaled out and cornered, I gave him an answer. It causes, him shaggy, it causes his shaggy features to twist into a genius smile that would scare little children senselessly. Precisely. Good work, Makai. I'm both disturbed and honored by the fact that he can remember my name only one week after I transferred here. When I've seen Muto has serious trouble remembering the names of anybody else in the class, and most of them have been here since the first year. Put themselves into a dreary mood, students and teacher alike trying to get back on track after the festival. I figured last week must have been frantic for everyone. Not a minute too soon, the lunch bell rings. Hey, the picture. Make way, important business. I turn my head just in time to see other people scatter out of the way as someone charges from the far end of the corridor towards the stairwell. So I realize I'm standing in the middle of the corridor directly in the way of the oncoming human projectile. I try to skip I just try to skip backwards toward the door, and unfortunately the person running towards me dodges in the same direction. In the following fraction of a second, several things come to mind in sequence yet almost simultaneously. First, I recognize the girl who is in the collision course of me is Emmy. Second, I realize that it feels somehow very natural to be tackled by Emmy once again. I could feel almost comfortable if not for the reflexive pain and terror. Panic and terror. Third, Emmy seems to be carrying a foot-tall sack of pairs while running in the hallway. Crashes into me, but at least the impact was a grazing one on my arm this time. Owie! Why does this always happen to me? Because you're running in the hallway. Gee, I wonder, could it possibly have anything to do with you running through the corridor like you were on fire? She whimpers regretfully, looking like a hurt puppy. The sight gives me, makes me regret snap... The sight makes me regret my snappish comment the very instant it emerges from my lips. But I was in a hurry. I can tell. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Emmy, Emmy wails weakly one last time and rubs her forehead as if to expel the ache while her gaze sweeps over the hallway floor. As she notices her neat stack of papers spread all over the floor in one big mess, she lets out a horrified yelp. Ah, the printouts! Oh, no, 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 what am I going to do? Teacher will give me hell if, you get, if they get dirty. They'll probably, they'll, they're probably fine. Let's gather them back up. It won't be a problem. I'm going to take a drink of water. Sounds like a plan. I'm almost done with this water. <laughs> Has been like two hours, so. I you know. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Want to get out scene here? If you want. Sure, I want to. Okay. All right. Can you can hear your triumphant voice talk about how you didn't die. Yeah. That'll be the first thing I say to him when he gets in. <laughs> I didn't hey, die. I didn't die. I'm not dead. It's soil and green as people. It's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. <laughs> Is that part of the thing? Yeah. He's back again. And the, yes. Oh, hey, no. Odyssey. I didn't die. Good job, man. We were both really worried because it was heading in that direction. Yeah. I was like, this is the exact same text. And then it wasn't. Oh, wait. Yeah. And now the good has happened. Yep. Uh, so are you still on that one? No. Yeah, it's the anime. Are you, did you get Rings? Yep. Yeah. We, we got her anime. Yeah, I know. Isn't the anime cool? It's pretty cool. He goes like a goes to like a psychotic trip, which I don't appreciate. Not really oh, a psychotic like, trip. I mean, yeah, just like a surreal looking thing. You're yeah. one for that kind of like, thing. Like, let's see here. It had it had dragons and it had dandelions and it had a bed. 
Turn it's foreshadowing to you. Yeah, oh. Once you complete the Could, roof, then you go back to and you'll be like, oh, that'd be cool. Oh, bad. I get it now. Oh, bad. Flowers, dragons. <laughs> They're all symbolic. Dragons. Well, dra dragons are symbol some symbolism for snake, and snake is a symbolism for a very special male organ. The dandelion right. spreads its seed across the land like a very special male organ. <laughs> Ah, this is gonna be a very interesting ending. <laughs> <laughs> we click. A, we click. <laughs> we click. <laughs> Come on, man! You can do it. it. Round of papers. And we can sort the scattered pile in our hands back into the orderly stack. It was. Where are you going? Nowhere in particular, I guess. Didn't want to be left alone with Muto in the classroom. I think he has a hangover. Have you eaten lunch? Not yet, but I'm not feeling very hungry anyway. She looks at me incredulous, incredulously, as if doubting my sanity for letting such a thing out of my mouth. You should come to the roof. I promised Rin I would eat lunch there. I bet she'd like company. Uh-oh, my lunch with Rin had been remarkably unsuccessful. I heard that as lunchies. I was like, is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the lunchies. The lunchables. Oh, no. To be fair, that might be what they're eating. I doubt it. Japan doesn't have such things. They just have bento boxes in, like, a can. I mean, isn't a Lunchable basically a bento box? Like a bento box you buy, and not a homemade one from a like, Kohai. Nobody gives a Lunchable to this empire. <laughs> I can't cook, so I just bought you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know you like Lunchables. <laughs> it's like, I know you like food. It's the pizza one. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> No, those things are awful. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, oh yeah, I got you the ham and cheese one. Oh, you can like build the crackers yourself. How do you build a cracker? You know, you, like, you, you know, with her feet. Crackers. She doesn't have arms. Jeez. Yeah. How does she wash her feet? Like, when she goes to the bathroom. I you know. Like, she, does she just like lean back onto the sink? No, she dips it in the yeah. toilet. <laughs> because that makes sense. <laughs> I know where this conversation is going, it's hard to not get drawn along, so I have little choice but to play ball. No, it's funny why it wasn't working. Okay, I'll pick up some bread or something first. And he smiles brightly before I say anything further. No, no, I'll go and deliver these super quick and then go buy lunch first. They ran two, of course. What kind of bread do you like? The good kind. It's fine. French. You don't really French, yeah. If he says French, it's all over. The world ends. It's it's fine, you don't really need to... Don't worry, it's alright. Consider an apology. I'll be back before you know it. That's what I'm worried about. Don't get into another accident. And we start walking down the hallway, but since she's still talking to me, she isn't watching where she's going. She run into somebody else? I won't. In this last word, she's already jogging down the stairs as she sounds that not-so-reassuring promise back to me. If she gets French bread... French bread, yeah. French yeah. bread, it's all over. She gets a French bed, and then it's really all over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the game's over. <laughs> yeah, then I fall off the bed and break my neck. Well, well jeez. <laughs> Kenji, someone standing in your room, like, yep, I knew this would happen. <laughs> I called it. Yeah, and then, then the trouble. Castlevania theme starts playing. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you should better play that after this. I already tried playing it a lot, multiple times. Well, Uneasy. I haven't good. tried it yet, but I plan on it. And there's also this, this other couple of Shadow Fang games I'll show you after. All right. Wait, what is it? Phone call. Ah, Hi. Okay. Sighing quietly, I start plodding along in her wake, but instead of taking the stairs down, I climb upwards. The stairwell up to the roof is unlit and just as creepy as it was before. The door squeaks weakly and protests as I push it open. And... <laughs> that took a while. <laughs> Rin is there too, like Emmy said, lying on her back at the other end of the pebble-covered rooftop for some reason. Predicting, predicting something unnecessarily strange again, I walk to her as slowly as possible. That looks like it's just copy-pasted on there. Probably is. I thought it was going to be like an actual draw. Hello. She sounds very drowsy as she says that, stretching the end of the word with a slurred voice. Despite that, her eyes are wide open. She's the one who's going to fall off the roof. I look down at her, my shadow overlapping her face. What are you doing? Rin raises an eyebrow. 
I thought you had a heart problem, not an eye problem. Jeez, jab. <laughs> Chance, she answers, challenging the rationale of my perfectly valid question without even tilting her head to look at me. When smart ass comments are infuriating, the worst thing is that I'm not sure if she's doing it on purpose or not. All right, then, let me rephrase. Why are you lying on your back on the rooftop? She gives a lazy shrug and sniffs dismissively. Dang, Dale. No, that was an actual sniff. But I'm it was to... two on the nose. Nose. Ah, I see what you did there. I mean, it was it was a poor choice of words, but I I didn't I couldn't think of another thing for it. I'm trying to experience. People probably don't do this enough. Experience. Has she ever been experienced? Probably. Oh. What exactly are you trying to experience here? I can't really tell, but there's probably a reason people don't do whatever. She's playing dodgeball with me again, answering my attempt at small talk with riddles I don't want to puzzle out. But I don't want to ignore her either. Yeah, but the reason is that everyone is too busy with their lives to pay attention to the really important things. Like what? Like watching the sky? She tears her gaze away from the sky and finally looks straight at me. The penetrating deepness of her eyes once she focuses them on something startling. You know, if you were a girl, I would be able to see your panties. <laughs> If I was a girl, I wouldn't come this close to anyone who tried to sneak a peek at my panties. <laughs> I have that much common sense. I wouldn't I wouldn't either, but sometimes it can't be avoided. Like now, for example. To tell you the truth, I don't To tell you the truth, I don't even really want to peek at your panties though. <laughs> Not yet at least. Underpants are the soul of a girl. You shouldn't peek at something else you shouldn't peek at someone else's soul, even if you are not a girl. <laughs> Guy, I guess I can understand that. To us, there's some sort of half-mythical object that we can't quite comprehend. Well, I never considered it like that. Yeah, that's exactly how I think about them, too. What a coincidence. It really is. So, did you have world history in the morning class? I skipped class. To do this? Oh, I'm not actually doing what it looks like I'm doing. Or at least I think that what I'm doing doesn't look like what I look like. But from my perspective, probably. That sounds like something I would say. It does. Yeah. By it yeah, sounds it's... like something you say, I'm pretty sure it's something you've said. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> yeah, I skipped class to do this. I guess whatever your reason is, as good as any. Giving into the tired feeling in my legs, I sit down on the roof next to Rin. The pebbles are not the most, uncom the most comfortable bed in the world, but if she can stand it, then I should be able to as well. What are you waiting for? Hmm? Try it. I bend my neck backwards to take a look at where she is looking. Over got a cloud sheet. my field the entire day. nothing special, even though the weather is fair. I give a shrug, trying to to imitate the nonchalant manner which Grin seems to have evolved to perfection and lie down on my back. The stones poke on my back through my thin shirt whenever I shift my weight even a little, forcing me to keep as still as possible. I try to ignore the discomfort and myself and sit on the back. I don't. Uh, I feel like Matt would hate this route because he hates pointless exposition. I'm going to kill this dog. I'm getting it. Get, 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 get. <laughs> I'm in my bed now. <laughs> Is that one of those flying dogs again? Flying dogs? What? Yeah, you know the second route, the second floor you're on. Oh no, she came in my room through the door, like dogs tend to do. Ah. Oh. All right. So what? Yeah, yeah Matt would. Guff, Guff would hate this. Yeah, Matt would hate this like nothing else. But honestly, likes it. It's my like, third favorite route. I like Rins and Sejunes because they're, they're not that romantic, but they have good exposition of the characters and just it's a pretty nice detail. I like Shizunes better than Rin though because uh, Rin's route has a lot of Emmy. I don't like Emmy much, and Shizunes route has a lot of Lily, and I like Lily more. And then Lily's my favorite, of course. So yeah, I both. Like Rin is pretty much. I relate to her the most, which makes it a lot easier to do this. To do this? What are you talking about? You like this game? I do I do a little bit. A little bit? That's coming down! It's not the best game, but it's actually kind of good. So you like it? 
I do. As far as books go, because it's more yes. of a book than a game. Yeah, as far as books go, this is better than Fallen Stars. There we go. That's all I need to hear. Definitely. Wait, what? Definitely, I agree to that. Yep. Now that everyone says anything more to say, the silence comes to the rooftop. Subdued noises of students on our lunch break, cicadas in the trees, and traffic buzzing past the school are humming pleasantly somewhere in the background. Listen, I had a great time yesterday. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Did you? Well, to be honest, no. But it was alright. It was probably the longest time I ever sat in one place without doing anything, which is kind of impressive. I tried to make it sound as convincing as possible. Is that impressive? I think it is. I'm usually too restless to do anything like that. I think I had a good time, too. Cloud passes over us, casting its shadow on the school. I feel I'll close the door, hold on a second. All right, a chill surges through me from the sudden change of sunlight to shade. I read this one. Okay. I realize that summer is not in its full bloom quite yet. The only measure of time passing is the slow pace of the clouds moving towards the town. Stray beams of golden sunlight leak through the gaps, blinding me for a moment whenever they hit me directly in the eyes. The blue of the sky looks so unreachable. I can find it. <laughs> oh yeah, skydiving. honestly, we, we found out a way for how I can find clouds. What? Skydiving. Well... Um, like, I don't know. Like clouds, so don't hurt them, please, but, you know. I mean, you can't hurt a cloud. They're just big, and while they're not, like, I want to fight a storm cloud, and they probably wouldn't let me do that, but they did. <laughs> oh, man, you just get in there and get struck by lightning immediately. <laughs> hey, the lightning's going to take a little more lightning to kill me. But I need, I need a brave, stupid pilot to drive me into a storm cloud. J just wear a rubber suit on the way down. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's you actually don't need a dumb pilot, because you... You usually just fly above clouds like that, so you can just drop them above it. Nice. Yep. Right, you can get the drop on the cloud. You can drop kick the cloud. I, you're right! I can drop <laughs> kick the cloud. Oh, man. That reminds me of the time I spent in the hospital, where I was bored out of my mind on a daily basis. Somehow it didn't matter after a while. I learned to appreciate other things besides watching TV and gossiping with people I didn't even like. A comprehensive sensation of calmness spreads from my side to my other senses, finally hitting my brain. An airplane zooms by, leaving two thin contrails, two thin contrails in this wake, like a pair of chalk lines drawn from one end of the sky to the other. I wonder where it's heading. The low din of its engines carries all the way down to my ears, although it's barely audible over the racket from the quad. It's nice. It's nice, but I don't understand why this is more important than going to class. Isn't it good to do something you'd like? Every once in a while? Of course, but... What are you doing? And he has snuck up on us without either, notice, without either noticing and is only a step away from me. Only several packages wrapped in plastic firm in her arms. Again, the way he said that, without either noticing. That's true. Yeah. She leans forward and peeks over me, overshadowing my face almost the exact same way I overshadowed Rin before. This scene looks so weird. It looks like Emmy is just like God in the sky, <laughs> looking down at everyone. So she's Madoka. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how weird this looks. The two of us lying on our backs on the rooftop. That's what I asked too. I'd be more concerned about what you are doing. If I were you, I wouldn't come that close to people who could see your panty. <laughs> Bringing this up again. Lynn. I mean, his voice is scandalized, but she quickly takes a step backwards, pressing her hands against the front of her skirt so abruptly that the parcel of bread she was carrying fall. I quickly avert my eyes and glance angrily at her in. She pretends not to see me. You said it wasn't like that, right? He is. Right. He really, really is. <laughs> Amy scowls at Rain and crouches down to pick up the packages. She wipes the dust off them and skips lightly around me to Rin's other side where she sets herself down. Anyway, here's your bread. Sorry it took a while. I pull myself up into a sitting position and gratefully accept the bread Emmy's offering. All three of us ravenously dig into the simple meal. The bread is surprisingly decent and readily fills my stomach. So that's the flavor. 
Yeah, you know the pebble. It's like man, this is really crunchy bread. Exactly, everyone loves crunchy bread. It's like it's like crunchy peanut. It's like crunchy peanut butter, but yeah. crunchy bread. Crunchy bread and butter. Dude, that would be great if they put peanuts in bread. Pretty sure some do. That sounds great. I should try. To, up, I should look for that sometime. You just look up peanut bread. Dude, that sounds really good. Dang no. I follow from the corner of my eye the skill with which Rand handles her bread between her feet. Rand, 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 Rand. I haven't seen you on. The, I haven't seen you on the track in a few days. Was that Odyssey? Thank you for adding in this unavoid name. It's needed. He's already done that once before. Yeah. <laughs> He said sometimes he doesn't say Ray, sometimes he says Ryan. Oh, he's yeah. Ryan. That'd be oh. better. Yeah, this is also good. <laughs> oh. But then you'd be going yeah. out with a guy, and, you know. I mean, hey, I don't know what that is. Well, he's going out with Ryan, not a guy. Or at least I don't I think don't, I, mean, I don't know what it is. Okay. <laughs> I missed that, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't worry about it, Dale. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, right. I figured it was too heavy a routine for me to start with. So you've been doing something else? I've been considering my options. She frowns, She frowns, but doesn't pursue the issue further, for which I'm thankful. I mean, she's pretty headstrong, and I wouldn't really want to get pers- pestered by her about this on a daily basis. I have enough burdens to bear with Shizune and Misha already. I thought she's going to be Shizune or whatever. Or was it she, she, Shizzy? She's a Shizzy! <laughs> We barely finished the lunch before the bells ring, calling us back to our classrooms. Kichan. Misha waves at me as soon as I enter and starts talking before I even make my way across the classroom. How was your festival? Did you have fun? Um, still somewhat undecided on that, I'd say, probably. Why? Wahaha, totally. Just asking, just asking. Her eyes glint in a way that tells me she's not just asking. I can't even start to guess her motives, though. As the well-time entrance of the English ginger prevents us from talking further, Misha falls back to plan B. Is there all day with shi We had a lot of fun. Aren't you supposed to be doing work? What is this? Oh, it's notes. Oh, because class don't, is starting. Yeah, don't worry. Everything went really well. I don't reply to that, and she leaves me alone after Shizune demands her attention. Staring at the time. Sure, she's done it before. Everyone has. Everyone. Everybody's doing it. Dur, 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 dur. That's a song. <laughs> that was kind of a, that was kind of a song. All right. It's no use trying to guess her mind, but if I don't do that, then I have no excuse for not concentrating on the teacher's words. I look at the scribbles appearing on the blackboard, trying to figure out their meaning with little success. English really is not my favorite subject. We have a strong mutual dislike for each other. Darn. Jax. There's a picture again. Thick, hot afternoon light of the Ooh. invades the corridor, making the air feel heavy and lazy. I saw the picture and I was like, nope, can't speak. <laughs> okay. That's his curse. It makes me not speak good. Oh, well. The right my, body feel, my body feels weighed down by it as I drag it to... My body feels weighed down by it as I drag two doors down the hallway to the art classroom. What is he dragging again? I forgot. His body. Ah. Maybe this is part of the reason why I don't join any clubs before. Afternoons just aren't suited for activity. I knock on the door of the art room and open it. A girl who is possibly doing something important with the scroll of paper she's carrying turns to reckon me and smiles in a sweet, if a bit confusing manner. Confused manner. Hello? This does not look like a student. Why not? This is the art club, right? She looks like a teacher. Why is that, Dale? She looks kind of like Yuko. I guess that's why. Close the eyes. Yep. Well, it's that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I might already have done so, but we'll see. I give her a weak smile and her own lines and notch, making me feel less nervous. Great. Have a seat then. We'll start when the teacher gets here. Yeah. 
A few people members are lounging in their seats waiting for the teacher. Lynn sits alone in the window seat looking outside. She's the only person here that I know, although a guy I've never really gotten along with from my own classes here too. No, wait, yeah, there we go. No, you no one wait a minute, go back one real quick. Okay, we read that one. Nobody else comes to greet me. Maybe introduction to look for later. So I just settle for silent observation as well. We're approaching ninety megabytes. I think that'd be a good time to stop. <laughs> One boy has sunglasses on. An odd sight indoors. Were we not at Yamaku? I bet he's the blonde student we was talking about. The wait proves to be extremely short. Namiya walks over to stand beside his dad, behind stand. his desk. And George, George, <laughs> and gives a smile and a flamboyant greeting. Good afternoon, everyone. Christine first. Sal there is a new member, so everyone gets along with him. He winks at me unsettlingly. <laughs> All eight members of the club, including myself, answer his greeting with considerably less enthusiasm. Still, people finally straighten up in their seats and begin to pay attention. I think some of you still have projects to work on, so please continue with those if you like. As for the rest, I was thinking today we could do some rough studies. How does that sound? Nobody answers except nobody answers except with some unintelligible rumors, which Nomiya apparently interprets as a unanimous approval. All right then, everyone not working on the other projects, choose a partner and draw a sketch of one another. You should be able to complete this today, but if not, we can continue it next time, or even do it again if you find it interesting. Remember to pay attention to the lighting and shadow and give it your best. Pairing up, I feel pretty awkward about it, hardly knowing anyone here. I wish someone had asked me to be their partner. People stand up and move their chairs closer together, but nobody comes to me. Mm, what a loser. Pretty soon, everyone else has paired off. Friends team up with each other, but I'm left alone. Well, there is Rin. She's sitting in the furthest corner of the classroom, still staring out the window and seemingly uninterested in taking part in the exercise. Since she's the only one without a partner, I want I walk to her seat. I want her. <laughs> I want her seat. It's a very comfy looking seat. I want it. <laughs> I can't see her face because her hair is covering most of it, and she's looking away from me. Rin? I call out to her. No response. Hey, want to partner up? You're the only one I know here. She seems to finally acknowledge my presence, head turning like a robot, as she looks to see who is addressing me. Ellipses. Rin doesn't answer, and I don't want to repeat the question either. I'm sure she heard it the first time. Ellipses. Why didn't she say anything? Can't be such an awful fate to be paired up with me, can't it? Actually, you know, so you break and see what She doesn't look at my face and says stares directly at my chest and stomach. I'm done. Ellipses. Oh, okay. Why not? Ellipses. Okay, good. Great, I'll get the stuff for this. Looking at the equipment Nomiya has prepared for today's meeting confuses me. So graphite or pencils, we were supposedly to do ink sketches. I've never done anything like that before. It's just Trevor seems confident in my abilities to adapt to this medium. Simple. First you do the outlines in ink. You let them dry and then you shade with the, the diluted ink. This is called India ink. It works like watercolors. If you're uncomfortable with that, use a pen instead of a brush for the outlines. He's back! Can I just say... This tie has always really freaked me out, because to me, it just looks like a bunch of tongues on, like, some <laughs> yellow background. Wow, and it's well, strange we, how... Yeah, it's all the... Yeah, we said it was a pizza. <laughs> yeah, because it's pepperoni and cheese. Well, that's much more normal. <laughs> yeah. <than tongues. laughs> I mean, like, if I really look at it, it looks kind of like red teeth on a mouth. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, if I really look at it, it doesn't look like... It looks like rose petals, honestly. Also, just like his shoulder pads are so sharp, I feel like he just has his bones jutting out yeah, of his shoulders. That's, that's what I think, too. It looks so unnatural, really. That's like his, yeah. his hands on the front of his pants, and usually they're on the sides. Of... Well, to be fair, that's what that looks like, when, because he's, like, raising his arms up. Well, he's weird. Mm -hmm. like, if his arms are flat, then those things will be flat, too. He's got that Rorschach test tie of his, apparently. Or <laughs> see something else. <laughs> uh, moving on. Got it. Pick up paper, water cups, one pen for me, one brush for Rin, and ink for both of us. Then return to Rin. 
grabbing a vo grabbing a vacated chair from nearby, and I see myself directly opposite her. Do you want me to do it with my foot or my mouth? What did you say? She tilts her head, her brows conforming, questioning arcs, as if she doesn't understand that I didn't understand the question. I don't mind drawing either way. It look better if I do it with my foot, though. It's your foot, then, if it's all the same to you. And nodding an answer, Rin gets up from her seat and kicks off her sandals. In two fluid motions, she picks up the paper sheet and drops it on the floor, then snatches the brush between her toes sit before sitting on the floor in a weird half-cross-legged position. Although I've seen her do everything with her feet already, from eating the painting, the display of dexterity is so pro prodigious that I just stared at her stunned. Rin, con Rin contemplates her blank paper tent with the sharp tip of her brush, hovers over the paper in anticipation. When she raises her head to see if I'm ready, I quickly turn my face away. I'll go first. Make a pose. Jojo. What kind of a pose? Jojo! <laughs> It doesn't matter. That's the point. You have to make the sketch. Of the... That's the. <laughs> you have to make the sketch of the impression you get, not decide beforehand. I end up just sitting in my chair, my hands hanging limply between my knees. I look at her, and she looks at me for a moment before beginning. Then stares piercing by the past. Second. All right. Oh, it's typing. Is that Odyssey? Yeah, that's me. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and read this one. <laughs> Rin mm -hmm. stares piercing, but impassive, as if she were trying to absorb part of me into her own self. I feel like I'm physically shrinking under the pressure of her gaze. Dog had to get her dog. <laughs> the dog has a dog? Yep. Man, even my dog has a dog. <laughs> I don't know why we're black, but hey, why not? <laughs> I mean, you know. I get the feeling that for the first time since we met, Rin is actually looking at me instead of in my general direction. I thought he thought that, like, twice before. She sketches with confident cold <laughs> and with both of us, not caring about the potentially destructive consequences of an accidental misplaced stroke. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch all that. <laughs> okay. Did she have... After she's happy with the outline, she stands up to pose for me, stretching her back and legs. This time, she doesn't look at me. Instead, Rin lets her gaze wander around the room. I'm relieved. It's easier to stare at someone when they aren't staring back at you. And so I find it hard to get the sketch going. I'm not especially artistically talented, so I'm scared my portrait will turn into something disfigured, especially when compared to my partner's skill. I don't want to embarrass myself too badly on the first try. That's the best time to embarrass yourself, because it's on the first try. You know. Rin is not helping the process either. She doesn't stand still for even 10 seconds, tilting her head from one side to her judge her drawing, biting her lower lip, looking unsatisfied, and constantly shuffling around like she was on hot coals. I finally managed to make some headway on my sketch, and with my outlines done, we both start inking in the shadow and light. Nomiya passes by and remarks on the beginnings of our sketches. Very good. Standing figure is easier for being to get a grasp of. I didn't choose the pose. I look at him and then it ran in confusion, but he's already moving on to the next pair, and Rin is, seems unresponsive. Just like when she's painting a mural, Rin has become so engrossed with her work that it seems she has shut me, the classroom, and the entire world itself out from her own little sphere of existence. Every now and then she leans backwards unseemingly to get some perspective. Sometimes she bends forward, leaning down until her nose almost touches the paper. This rocking back and forth looks silly. Suddenly, Rin proves she has completely drifted off into the world of her own and speaks. Are you having fun already? She doesn't raise her eyes from the drawing, which is a good thing. The breaking of the silence is a jolt of surprise through me, as if I've been electrocuted. I don't know yet. It's hard to say. I, can, I can't hear how she replies to my answer, because it seems she's suddenly having a private whispered conversation with her sketch. I don't understand how she can draw so well when she has the attention span of a butterfly. To seems she lost her interest, I go back to work on my drawing as well. I try to add texture to Rin's hair to somehow grasp the way that golden afternoon sun lights her bright red tussle aflame and transfer it to my paper in shades of black and gray. 
Somehow this pen and the bottle of ink seem much seem like such lousy and adequate tools for the task. In its past, but the sketch doesn't magically look any more like Ren than it did before. It always wakes me up from my despair. What about now? Excuse me? Are you having fun already? Why do you keep asking that? This is a club, right? Clubs are meant to be fun. You join to have fun. Are you having fun? Is it important to me that I'm having fun? Yes. Okay, I'm having fun. Good. I wonder if I said that just to please her or if I really meant it. I can't really decide which is which. Which is... I don't hate this, though. I can honestly say that much. It's good enough for me. <laughs> Alright. Hey, I tried I tried to reread that, and then I, you just... Well, excuse me, sir! Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. So we told you now is a good time to... Uh, yeah. 92 megabytes? Yeah, that's probably good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. This is getting pretty good. I mean, you, you thought it was pretty good before. And now it's getting better. Oh. I thought it was pretty good when I didn't die. So. And then you died and you lost all hope. Yeah, I died and I lost all hope. Then I didn't die this time. And I regained hope, I think. <laughs> I think. Until you see the ending. Yeah. No, the ending is going to be like, yeah, this is good. No, I hope not. Please don't say that while you're looking at that. <laughs> I'm going to say exactly that. Because, yeah, this is good. Be supposed to say Polnareff. <laughs> well, he certainly came in Polnareff. There you go. Oh, man. All right. Well, now... Mm. <laughs>